a competitor, this man is. You know, in the entire roster of one Super Series Dragon, where we've got the greatest champions, the greatest Muay Thai fighters, the greatest kickboxers, I say the biggest heart of all belongs to Joseph Lassiri. 100%, Michael. Watching Joseph Lassiri fight the Italian stallion that is Lassiri, it's all about his pressure. He moves forward and tries to get on his opponents, even while the referee is trying to tell him to stop. He'll push the referee aside and continue to march forward. This win against Rocky Ogden was really impressive. The way that he was able to control inside that close distance, he just breaks people. He overwhelms them with his pressure, and he just keeps it coming. I like his utilization of the elbows and also those close-range punches. For those unfamiliar with the Muay Thai uniform, the coach is currently removing what's called a bolt gun. It consists of a narrow strip of cloth containing magical letters and symbols that's been rolled up tightly of a mother's sarong and wrapping it around her son's arm for good luck when it went into the battlefield. So it's part of that beautiful culture, hundreds of years old, thousands of years old of Muay Thai that is carried in to the modern combat sport. Dragon, this one should be thrown. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this matchup. It's going to be a tough test, not only for Asai, but for also Lassiri. Lassiri has been, you know, really uh, kind of show, becoming a star here in one Super Series. He has got a lot of fanfare. A lot of people have really started to gravitate towards him because they really enjoy his style, because he's all action all the time. But for Asai, at just the tender age of 20 years old, this is a very big test for this young man to come in here and go up against the veteran like Lassiri. I really want to see these two just come forward and start banging with each other because they both have that style. It'll be interesting to watch how Asai kind of adjusts to the pressure of Lassiri. Joseph enjoys Japanese opponents. He is the only man to beat Terogi Akimoto. That win is more remarkable now that the two of them are two divisions apart. So it's a one Super Series Muay Thai clash at a catch weight of 57.85 kilograms. Joseph Lassiri is the taller by two centimeters. Our Muay Thai global rule said this one means it's three by three minute rounds and three judges serve beside a scoring on a 10 point must system. Here's Dom. And now, this match is three rounds of three minutes in a one catch weight Muay Thai contest. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, he is a WBC Muay Thai world champion, standing at 168 centimeters tall and weighing in at 57.85 kilos, holding a Muay Thai and kickboxing record of 19 wins and 9 losses. Training out of PK Senchai Muay Thai team, representing Japan! Please welcome Asaki! his opponent out of the red corner. He is the number three strawweight Muay Thai contender and a WBC Muay Thai world champion, standing at 170 centimeters tall and weighing in at 56.3 kilos, holding a Muay Thai and kickboxing record of 41 wins and 12 losses. Training out of kick and punch Milano, representing Italy and Morocco. Introducing Joseph the Hurricane Lassiri. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mr. Olivier Cost. Hi guys, we shall for the headbutt. Low blow, back of the head. There's the hand on the shoulder we spoke about from Lassiri, that intimidation tactic he always seems to use against opponents. I remember when he fought Josh Tonner, a fight he lost, a very narrow decision loss to Tonner. Uh, Tonner actually shrugged the hand off constantly of Lassiri. Interestingly also to see Lassiri performing a little white grab board in his corner Ready? as Dom Lau was announcing Ready? his name. Two WBC Muay Thai super bantamweight world champions throw down in the circle. Look out for the liver shot off the left hand of Shinagawa. 
Fight to dig the knuckles between their ninth and tenth ribs and aim for that vagus nerve to close down opponents' bodies. Immediately, right there, nice little dig to the body off that left hand of Asai. You can see him looking for that left hook. I like that weapon of choice because he's also kind of reached out there with it. You can see how it's kind of his lead hand. It's uh, his lead shot. He's trying to reach out there, touch him with that left hook. He's trying to apply a lot of pressure again, dig into the body. Solid start from both these men. Never a slow start when Shinagawa's in the circle. He's up there from the Japanese athlete. Perfectly legal under Muay Thai rules. Wouldn't be under kickboxing rules. Looking for the inside leg, Lassiri. Open in orthodox stance. Plenty of reach in that rear hand there from Shinagawa. Lots of feints coming from Asai as well. Good defense with small gloves. I was wondering how he would adapt his style to these small gloves. And he seems to take it like a fish. The water man, so beautifully done. Good tie, clips locked on for a moment there from Lassiri. Gets off the left knee, right knee from Shinagawa. Good refereeing up here from Olivia Cost there to let the grapple go a little longer. This is Muay Thai. There's the tipping liver shot and the hook to the head from Shinagawa. That lead hand is dripping already, Dragon. Yeah, the series got to be very careful with his right side. Like, he's got to protect his body with the elbow and also the hand um, to protect that chin because Asai is throwing it. But here's that pressure coming from the series. The series, like we said at the walk, he is one of the toughest men inside one super series. He just continues to march forward in each shot. He's dominant inside the clinch. Good distance management from Asai to avoid that elbow. The Siri does like to prefer that Louis Vuitton style. He drops Asahara and Shinagawa here in the first round. Shinagawa may not get up. That's a wrap. This is a huge win for the US of Lassiri. That's a huge win for Italy. Out of nowhere. Well, Lassiri, who never really knocks opponents out, has just derailed the hype train of Shinagawa, who came in build tonight as Japan's number one Muay Thai star. Siri gets him out of there in a hurry, says goodbye, and he's out of Chi Chop Chop. That straight right hand, was that a straight right? That turned out the lights right there, look at that. Caught him and just crumbled him and put him to sleep. Now take another look, look at this. No, no. I think it's the knee here, the knee hurts him as well, it's not even dead Chi Roma. The knee hurt him, Dragon. Yeah, because he was out, that's why it hurt him, because he was he didn't really feel it. What? He was sleeping, Michael. <laughs> Joseph Lassiri out of nowhere shocks all of sundry and may have put himself in line for a world title tilt. Uh, let's go to Tom Lau to make it all official. My goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Olivier Cost, has called a stop to this contest after two minutes and five seconds in the first round for your winner by way of knockout juice. to put this in the context, folks, Joseph Lassiri, who never knocks anyone out, has now just knocked out a WBC World Super Bantamweight Champion and the man built the number one Muay Thai fighter currently in Japan, and he did it easily. Bravo, Joseph Lassiri. Still to come tonight, our main card features Team Lakai and the Philippines versus the world. Make sure you check your local TV listings in over 100 and 50 countries worldwide. Oh, tiny back, he drops it! Oh, the big kickoff! Here it comes, oh, come on, God! Oh, left hand! Oh, he dropped it! Punches down on top. This is awesome, this is crazy! And it is all over! This is one that Filipinos have been waiting for. The unleashing of a new superstar at one championship. Team Lakai's new generation of stars are ready to go for gold. The gym from Baguio City, Philippines has produced five world champions. And that looks set to continue with this current crop of young lions. Joshua Pascio's talent was plain to see in his first pro fights on the Filipino circuit as a teenager. By the time he was 20, the passion was making waves on the global stage, and it wasn't long before he reached the top. Pascio was just 22 when he won the one strawweight world title for the first time. Fast forward three years, and he's the most dominant world champion in the division's history. This is some of the best 
condition I've ever seen him in. He's going forward. Nice little left high kick landed there by Pacquiao. He's respect the power. So we've got to be careful getting that close to him without putting something behind it. You see an inch and forward. See, just like that. Got to be careful. Honestly, place for Pacquiao. No doubt, absolutely two down for the Oh, the left hand! Stops him in another one! And the third and fourth, the fifth, the sixth, it's over! Pacquiao does it again! The champ retains! Absolute inspiration, 25 years old. Pacquiao capitalized on that opening, punctuated the trilogy matchup. Another young lion who has already emerged as an elite contender is flyweight star Danny Kingad. At only 26, the King has already been one of the division's elite competitors for years. Kingad enters the circle, never aiming to play it safe. He's a crafty veteran, big leg kick of the King, and a jumping knee, and a cater calls him forward again. Overhook on the air. Arm there momentarily from the gator. King Ad has him on the ground now. What can the King do to keep him there? Takes the back. Does he beat the second one? He might transition into mount here. Kingad is now defending him with the arm. He scrambles, but Kingad is able to outscramble him. Kingad ends up in top position here. Side control for the King. Cuts in the hips. Sensational so far, the king. Wolf is it for a knockout. It's like I'm holding my breath, waiting for it. Back to their feet, not for long, though. What a beautiful takedown and reversal back to King Ed. And he still is unaffected, still blitzing forward. We're trying to scramble out of this. Smaller stars for the third round from both these men. Jab to Ikeda Abugat from King Ed at the knee. Trying to pull the head down for the meet and greet. But he's looking at who's been those feet locked. Good job by Kingad to shake him off. It looks like he's going for a Kimura trap here. Extends where Ikeda might be able, because of the position of his arm, he might be able to pull his arm out. Kingad's preventing the arm from coming over to lock in the choke, but Ikeda gets it into the last minute. There are many other rising stars at Team Lakai, and two of them will join Kingad as part of a stacked card at one Winter Warriors 2. Before the King faces Kairat Akhmatov in the main event, 19-year-old John Lowe, Mark Sangal, son of Team Lakai's head coach, Mark Sangal, steps up against Paul Lumihi. And Stephen Lohman makes his long-awaited one debut against Yusuf Satellayev in a bout that could determine the next challenger for the one bantamweight world title. And you can watch it in over 150 countries worldwide. Make sure you check your local TV guide. All right, we continue our lead card here for One Winter Warriors 2. Let's get straight to the next bout. A bantamweight mixed martial arts contest set for three rounds as Brazil's Fabrizio Andrade takes on Lee Kai Wen. Representing China, the underdog, Lee Kai Wen. Every time I hear that music dragon, I get a little scared because this is a scary man, Lee Kai Wen. Knockout artist with the fourth fastest KO in one history. It took him 10 seconds against Radia Menchevich. Yeah, Mikai Wen, he's currently riding a four fight win streak, and he does a lot of that damage with that right hand. His timing and accuracy are exceptional. And if he gets you hurt, he's going to close the show. He's got serious power that he carries with him deep into the match. And I'm really looking forward to this matchup because of the striking style that Andrade brings. Lee Kai Wen was very unconcerned with the abilities and the style of Andrade. Lee Kai Wen has been training really hard out there at Team Alpha Male in California. And he says that he's added different elements to his game. Now, you guys got to remember that Lee Kai Wen, yes, he may be a striker now because he likes to put the hurt on people. But this
This young man came to one championship with a deep wrestling pedigree, and he has refined that wrestling style over there at Team Alpha Male, and he's now ready to really try to mix things up. And he says we're in store for something special here tonight, and he wants to showcase a new blend of wrestling with his boxing. He likes this, but he, he likes the striking battle, but he might look for a takedown, and don't put it past him. Always an exciting night when Lee Kai Wen is inside the circle, but he is taking on a young gun in Andraja. A young gun, you, you say that Lee Kai Wen has trained immensely for this one, but how do you train for the unorthodox style of Andrade? A Muay Thai star who has switched to mixed martial arts and absolutely stunned the division so far. Representing Brazil! Fabricio Wonderboy Andrade! The Wonderboy from Brazil is the focus of a lot of people in this very heated bantamweight division because he has had two big wins since arriving one championship over Mark Abelardo, who he knocked out or choked out cold, and then he beat Shoko Sato, who is in line to fight for the world title. Yeah, Mike, let's go back in time and take a look at that Shoko Sato match. I was really impressed with Andrade in this matchup against a veteran like Sato. We saw him utilize angles very well, good timing. He was able to counter and really negate all of the offense that was coming from Sato. Andrade is also on a four-fight win streak, and he has a very solid Muay Thai base. He competed for a long time in just striking, and he really refined that um, ability to take people out on their feet. But for this match, you mentioned Thailand, Michael, but for this fight, he actually went back to Brazil and trained at Nova Union and really got a lot of high-level partners out there. He knows that Lee is an explosive fighter, but he says that Lee overcommits, and he plans on using Lee's power against him by connecting and really breaking him over the duration of this match. He knows that Lee Kai Wen believes in his right hand, and that belief is going to be his downfall. Fabricio says that he's faster than Lee, and he has a plan for how he wants to execute this victory. The bantamweight division is stacked, and you feel a win here for Andrade tonight will move him one step closer to a title shot. Andrade the shorter by three centimeters to Lee Kai Wen. Now, mixed martial arts global rule set for this one. Don't forget, folks, the bout will be judged in its 15-minute entirety, not as three individual rounds. Here's Dom Lau. And now, this next match is three rounds of five minutes in a one pattern weight mixed martial arts contest. Introducing first... Out of the blue corner, he stands at 175 centimeters tall and weighing in at 65.8 kilos, holding a mixed martial arts record of 10 wins and 4 losses. Training out of Tianjin Top Team, representing China! Stepping into action is the underdog, Lee Kai his opponent out of the red corner. He is the number four bantamweight contender, standing at 172 centimeters tall and weighing in at 65.8 kilos, holding a Muay Thai and kickboxing record of 40 wins and three losses. Training out of Marit Force and Nova Uniao, representing Brazil. Get ready for Fabricio begins your referee in charge mr justin brown athlete center gentlemen you both know the rules we're going to keep this clean defend yourself at all times do not strike the back of the head let's watch the low blows touch gloves and back up please hey,
Battle of Strikers in the bustling bantamweight division featuring the breakout star of the last year, Fabrizio Andrade, against the bombing Lee Guy Wen. Andrade will have the speed, will have the length. Lee Guy Wen may edge him in power. Who will land his striking salvos first? Southpaw stance here on the Brazilian. The chin a little high in the air for Andrade. Watch the fake off that back leg, Dragon. Yeah, Andrade is carrying his hands a little bit low. It's a little bit different stance. I think we're seeing that Novo Union influence. He's light on his feet. Moving in now. Lee Kai Wen throws the leg kick, timing well. You see the long arms, the reach on that lead arm of Andrade. Lee Kai Wen can hook him over the top, so Fabrizio's going to be careful. Driving takedown from Lee Kai Wen. And Fabrizio back on his feet, put against the wire now. Something new coming from Lee Kai Wen to open the match with a takedown as he drops down, changes levels, and puts down Andrade. Staying true to his words, saying he wanted to mix in the wrestling for this matchup because he knows just how good Andrade is on his feet. I believe he's changing things up by utilizing the wrestling. Two takedowns inside the opening minute from Lee Kai Wen. Andrade breaks off. No chance for the elbows or the knees from the Muay Thai stylist. Back to center circle. Good jab to kangaroo combination there from Andrade. Trying to push Lee Kai Wen to the outside. There's the hook I spoke about earlier. Lee Kai Wen can thread that over the top of the lead glove all night long. And as Mitch said, those gloves are low on the Brazilian. Nice left hand by Lee Kai Wen. Let's see what Andrade has to do here on the feet. He's coming forward. He's controlling that center circle well. Lee Kai Wen's got good timing so far. It's three hooks landed in the space of the last 40 seconds from Lee Kai Wen, and it spells danger for Andrade. Andrade's timing that left hand pretty well, though, on the counter shot. I think he's just trying to figure out how... Uh, Lee Kai, he said, they told me that Lee Kai went overextends on his punches, but it looks like Lee Kai Wen's keeping his feet underneath him pretty well when he's throwing these hooks. Good step through knee, belly button through the back there from Fabrizio. Chevelli, you told me on the walk, you were like, there's no way this one goes three rounds. And the way these guys are touching each other, I'm starting to buy into your prediction pretty quickly. Licking jab, right hand, south ball starts, cutting side kick for the knee there from Andrade. Covers up against that hook, there's the Brazilian. Another one there from Lee Kai Wen. Kai Wen's got to be careful. He comes in very well, but when he is, after he throws that combination, he's kind of standing there. He needs to circle back out. He got touched right there by Andrade's right hand. Good Andrade, the power hand, the left hand. I like to see Lee Kai Wen go back to those takedowns, start mixing things up. The longer this stays on the feet, the better timing Andrade is going to start to showcase, especially with that left hand. That reach of Fabrizio is starting to cause problems now as he touches the bridge of the nose, the damaged bridge of the nose of Lee Kai Wen. There's a hook from Lee Kai Wen. Not getting on the inside as frequently as he was early on in the round, though, the Chinese athlete. Because of the backwards movement coming from Andrade, he can hit you off the back foot, and that's dangerous, especially when you have the striking capabilities of Andrade. Lee Kai Wen's got to be careful coming forward like that. It was one of the specialties of Brandon Vera and his reign as a heavyweight champion of the world, the ability to drift away and hook his opponents. Fade away hook, and we know that Andrade possesses a similar weapon. Overhand right to left hook there from Lee Kai Wen. Andrade peppering with the lead hand, trying to sit Lee Kai Wen at the end of his glove and then employ the left hand powerhouse. That jab's coming on Andrade really quick, but that knee hurt him. Ooh, that was on Beautiful Muay Thai knee, almost a fight by Gorogami. Can Andrade finish Lee Kai Wen here in the first with 53 seconds to go? And Yun! It's going back to the knee. Andrade all over Lee Kai Wen here. I'd like to see Andrade go to the body now. Lee Kai Wen was hurt with those knees and he did it again. Now he's starting to touch him. You can see the hands of Lee Kai Wen starting to come down. Lee Kai Wen's got to move. Might want to shoot here in the last 30. He's just careening into the right side of the body. To that liver section. To the... Bottom right ribcage, the high kick. Oh, 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 oh
Lapit na! Knock out! Galing! Ngayon mo, Brazil. He started it and the hands finished it. I love the way he went up top with that head kick too. You could see that he was hurting him to the body. The hands started to come down on Mikai Wen. He wrapped that shit around the chin and then he finished him off with the hands. Fabricio on drives is a problem in the Bantamweight division. It's what I like about Fabricio. It took him a while, took like a minute and a half to figure out Mikai Wen. Once he did, he set about dismantling it. Fight IQ coming from this young man from Brazil. Look at him. Let's see this. Oh, look at that. Up and that kid wobbled him, and then he goes after him with the hands. Look at this hand speed, Michael. Lee Kai Wen tries to retreat. Fabricio jumps all over him. Look at that. was the knee. That was the knee. Oh, man. That changed your mind real quick. Standing in front of him like that. It's almost that Christian Lee like finishing instinct that Andrade has. Here's Dom Lau. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Justin Brown, has called a stop to this contest after four minutes and 41 seconds in the first round for your winner by way of technical knockout, Fabrizio Andrade. Andrade advances his record to three and zero. Oh. Fantastic performance again. It's just an explosion. Oh, turning back kick! Look how fast it comes out of that. The ring on has won it. Robert Nia Pong underestimate. I will prove that I'm better, I'm stronger than Juan Manuel. Back to the mount position. Kevin Bellion <laughs> is an icon of one. The silencer has reached the highest heights in the circle. Oh, he's out. But recently, he's fallen on hard times. One Winter Warriors 2, the Filipino hero comes to a crossroads. Have we seen the best of him, or can he recapture the form that made him a world champion? Again, I think who's in trouble, although he is funny, but he's caught. Go, my doggy, Ben! Ben has always been a thrilling bantamweight, but he hit peak form during a seven fight winning streak that started in 2016. He became the hottest name in the division with knockouts of three former world title challengers. Oh, turn it back, he dropped him! Turn it back, he dropped him! Here comes Bellagod! The Filipino brings the house down! The assault! The Baron! Then he captured the interim gold with this sensational showcase against two division one world champion, Martin DeWitt. Ano lang talaga kasi grappling eh. Another fight, Bibiano. I think this thing is starting to build up for it. 
going to keep looking for that power. High kick from Belly Dorn. I think he needs to take that. He doesn't want to stand here. Yeah, I mean, okay. He was he was leaning more. Bellingham was a bona fide national hero, but his time at the top did not last long. He lost his belt to Fernandez a few months later and failed to overcome him in their fourth fight. And then in 2020, John Lineker became the first man to finish the silencer. Some think Bellingham is done, but he's determined to prove them wrong. There's a big fire inside me, and may ibubuga pa si Kevin Bellingham so one championship. So abangan yun na sa mga nagsasabi na ito yung huling role ko or laban ko hindi toto yan. I will prove you wrong. Malakas pa kay. On the 17th of December, Bellingham gets his shot at redemption, but it won't be easy. He faces one of the hardest hitters at bantamweight, South Korea's Kwon Won Il. I will prove that I'm better, I'm stronger than one of you. We are broadcast tonight to over 150 countries. Make sure you check your local TV guide. Okay, let's get to our next match. A one Super Series lightweight kickboxing contest as Mustafa Haider takes on newcomer Ariane Sadikovic. Holtzkin, where he becomes a gatekeeper for the top of the division. And 
hiatus. There's not wants to be anyone else as a stepping start. I don't know, Michael. I don't think it's do or die. I mean, you're coming off of losses against the champion, you know, and Nikki Holskin. If he can put together a performance like he did against Daniel Dawson, we really could see Muhammad Mustafa Haida get right back into the mix. That's a two. That's a two. But it's not a That's die. That's a win. That's it's a two. not a die. If he doesn't win, though, against a guy who's a newcomer to one Super Series, he becomes a stepping stone. I don't, know. A cake I don't know. It's not an absolute must because Sadiqovic is the real deal. He's, man. he's got all awesome awesome he needs to win this for his career tonight, Dragon. He can't go three losses in a row. Every fight is a must win, Michael. Every time you step foot inside of the circle, it is a must win. You have to come out the picture because of the stakes each and every time you compete. And Mustafa Haida, he knows that. He told me earlier this week that he understands the importance of this matchup. But because, you know, he's been in the limelight, he's fought, you know, right here in Urso. He is a world champion. He's also got wins over Andy Sauer and Enrico Kell. So Mustafa Haida does know how to get it done. But he has to dial everything in and really put on a great performance here tonight. How will he pick apart the boxing of Sadiqovic? And also, how will Sadiqovic handle the boxing of Mustafa Haida? Hide of the man who stopped Daniel Dawson. Daniel Dawson, a former professional boxing world champion. This one should be an absolute banger. A lightweight kickboxing one super series contest where Mustafa Haider comes in one centimeter, the taller, and six years the older. Three by three minute rounds, no time for feeling out. For our introductions, let's go to Tom Lau. And now, this match is three rounds of three minutes in a one lightweight kickboxing contest. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, he stands at 181 centimeters tall and weighing in at 77.1 kilos, holding a Muay Thai and kickboxing record of 21 wins and three losses. Training out of fight school Hanover and Team CSK. Representing Germany, please welcome Alien Game Over, Sandy Gobet. And introducing his opponent out of the red corner, he is an ISKA kickboxing world champion standing at 182 centimeters tall and weighing in at 76.95 kilos, holding a Muay Thai and kickboxing record of 54 wins and 12 losses. Training out of Fight Club Firenze, representing Italy. Introducing Mustafa Dynapai. begins your referee in charge mr olivier cost all right guys watch out for the headbutt logo and back of the head you both on the rules fight fair fight clean touch go if you want clap your corner former world title challenger mustafa Haider fights to stay relevant in the division contrary to what mitch would say against a hot prospect making his one super series right, debut in Ariane sadikovic Ready? Expect a Ready? battle of two boxes here. Southpaw stance on Haida. Lead with the cross early on from the Italian. Now, Michael, I know in the past Haida has been a boxer, like he likes to throw a lot of punches, but I expect him in this fight to really start throwing some kicks. He knows Sadikovic's sort of his tendency to rely solely on his hands, and I would expect Mustafa Haida really to start putting together the combinations with the kicks, especially off that, set, that southpaw side. He's got a heavy left kick. I wouldn't mind to see him start kicking the arms of Sadikovic, really start to wear on those hands and take a little bit of that power away. Checking off the lead leg so far from Haida off the leg kicks of Sadikovic. Knees are permitted, elbows are not under these kickboxing rules. Three judges circle side are scoring on a 10 point must system. There's that lead press again from Haida, but couldn't get the extension. Body shot from Sadikovic. Sadikovic has good head movement. See how his head's never on center? He's just constantly bobbing and weaving from left to right. 
Let's see if Mustafa Haida can time that and throw something up there. Looks like he got caught with a low blow. Accidental groin strike there from Sadikovic off the right leg. And Haida will get a recovery period here. An interesting start here from Ariane Sadikovic. First we're seeing in his one Super Series career. And here's the illegal strike. Uh, oh, oh, caught him with the knee too. A little mismanaged the distance there a little bit as he threw the low kick. The knee caught him on the groin. Mustafa Haida seems like he's okay to keep going. It looks Ready? like Ready? Mustafa Haida's oh. trying to counter strike. Like he's letting Sadikovic come forward, or Sadikovic could just be coming forward, forcing the issue. Nice left hand landed there by Haida. Checks again from Haida. Sadikovic needs to put his lead foot on the outside of Haider's lead foot to enable the right hand, which is public enemy number one of the Southpaw fighter. Uppercut to a cross, nicely done from Mustafa. Sadikovic with a left hook and an uppercut. Those hand combinations are coming. Some serious intensity of Sadikovic. Mustafa Haider needs to earn some respect, slow down this onslaught coming from Sadikovic. And I agree with what you said earlier on, Mitch, that Mustafa should go to the legs. One way to slow down your opponent's punches is to kick at their legs. Looks like it was another low blow landed by Sadikovic. I think it's just because of the range at which they're contesting this. Mustafa Haida doesn't really want to back up that much, doesn't want to allow that forward pressure to keep coming. So he's kind of standing in his ground, and Sadikovic caught him again. Also, will say, Dragon, often when it's a southpaw fighting an orthodox fighter, the, the groin strikes are more prevalent. Yeah, just, just because of the, the, the varied stance. Nothing deliberate there, though, from Sadikovic, but a firm move from Claudia Cost. Ready? Time. I'm told him next time it'll be a yellow card. Nice use of the single knee there from Sadikovic. Short uppercut from the German. These are good hands now from Sadikovic. Yeah, that's what Heidi needs to do. He needs to, like, counter that shot with that straight left hand of his. Sadikovic is getting more and more confident in his approach, and he's really starting to let those hands go. See, that's what I want to see. I want to see Mostafa Haida start kicking those arms, really start to wear on those arms and slow him down. And as we did allude to earlier, this is mostly a boxing contest. Good inside leg kick. Haida failed to check that one. Goes to the back leg. Nice work from Mustafa. Left hook to right cross. Short range knee from Sadikovic. Mustafa throws one of his own. And Olivia breaks them. I do like how Sadikovic comes right back after, you can see, see, he immediately starts moving forward and starts looking for the counter. He doesn't let Mustafa Haida keep coming forward. On round down, we go to the towels, folks. Let us know your thoughts on social media at one championship after one round. Scored on a 10 point must system. Give the winner of the round 10 points. The less dominant fighter gets nine points. Mitch, as we thought, mostly boxing, and I believe Sadikovic does have the upper hand after one. I'll give a 10 9 to the German. Yeah, you got to agree with that. A lot more activity coming from Sadikovic. A lot of pressure. Mustafa Haida needs to earn some respect. He needs to start mixing in the combinations, start to go after the legs, start to kick the body, and really start to wear on Sadikovic. Sadikovic is not even taking a stool. He looks very well conditioned, and I think from his pace that he showed in that first round, I think he's very confident to keep this thing going for the full three. So unofficially, we are going 10-9 for Ariane Sadikovic inside the magnificent Singapore Indoor Stadium. We move into round two of this one Super Series lightweight kickboxing clash. Italy versus Germany. The Italian in the red. Comes out smoking a little more with the hands here, does Haider. Maybe Haider's corner told him to get a move on with it. A beautiful body shot. He'd be nice and tight in his punches and stick through near there, Sadikovic. Certainly more gusto from both men at the start of this round, Dragon. Yeah, Haida's trying to come back, but Sadikovic just keeps coming with those hand combinations. He's mixing in the low kicks a little bit more. But I like the way Mustafa Haida is throwing that left hand right down the middle at the end of the exchange. Nice dig to the body right there. Hey, watch out for the headbutt. Watch out for the headbutt. Here Olivia just watching for the head clashes, which can also happen a lot when it's an orthodox versus a southpaw. 
jab, no right hand for company. There's the right uppercut though from Sadikovic. Threw it well early on the first round in the German. Good employed here on the inside again. A high kick from Haider. That's more like stuff for Haider. He needs to keep those kicks coming. You can see it's a battle of foot position. Whenever it's orthodox against southpaw, the lead foot is very important. So it's important to get to the outside of your opponent's foot so that you can have that center lane right down the middle of their guard. And Sadikovic seems to be controlling that outside lane so that, that his right hand can land more successfully. Whipping head kick there from Haida. Had the right foot, goes for it again. Switches up off the left leg now, Mustafa. See, now Mustafa Haida is starting to kick those arms, starting to attack the forearms, starting to wear on that. But he's only got, he run right halfway through this, so he really has to pick up the pace. Haida goes to that inside leg, trying to hit that sciatic nerve that runs down the inside thigh. Outside leg into the common peroneal nerve there from Sadikovic, tip through neck from the German. Hear them grunting and growling the thud of leather as it hits flesh here in center circle. Yeah, Sadikovic seems to have a speed advantage. He's a step, uh, maybe half a step ahead of Mustafa Haida here. But Mustafa Haida is having a better round here. I like him digging the body and also mixing in the kicks. The punches are just coming really consistently and at the same pace from Sadikovic. Haida has switched up to the high kicks in this round. I think he's thrown about five of them. Good outside leg kick to that hamstring area. Final seconds of the second round. Sadikovic trying to pummeling with those right hands. There's a stiff left hook and there's one from Haida the power hand. And these guys are starting to trade inside that pocket at close range. Two down, one remaining in this lightweight super, one super series kickboxing contest. Mitchell Forts. That was another good round, but it was a... I think Mosafa Haida did better in the second than he did in the first. But that's pretty close as far as that second round is concerned. We're going to go 10-10? Yeah, we'll go 10-10. I thought it was a good round for both of them. And I, I like the way Haida was trying to hunt with that head kick. Uh, switching it up, something a little different. We didn't see in the first round. A little more volume coming from Sadikovic, but it was a mix of weapons coming from Haida. And again, Sadikovic is still standing with big, deep breaths. He seems very composed. He doesn't look tired at all. For stuff Haida, his body language is not quite telling us that he's a fresher athlete at this point. 2019 on our unofficial scorecards after two, third and final round. draws in one super series so even if Haida wins the round 10-9 on our unofficial scorecard got to give it to someone certainly a knockdown would uh, tilt the fight in his favor good outside leg kick hits the back leg does Haida and again that will score for Mustafa so too will the return leg kicks from Sadikovic here, Haida grunting behind those blows. Martial arts. Oh, the body shot. Oh, oh, oh. Sadikovic turned away. Really? Didn't do himself a favor. He should have capitalized on Haida then. I think he thought he would have went down or at least got an eight count, but he didn't. And he just ran away. And then Mustafa Haida, he heard him. He heard him right there. Now he's hurt. The body shot. This could be it for Mustafa. Over there. He's trying to stretch it off. Step the moment here. Step forward. Step forward. Yeah, oh, very it looked like the first one was up high into the ribs. But then that second one came to the oh. other side. He's hurt. This is Sadikovic's hurt. chance. The left side's hurt of Mahida. Can Sadikovic finish him now? Goes for it again. Cracks him again to the upper left rib cage. Sadikovic rocks the head back. All over in here, the German. An absolute thrashing in the third round. And Haida is not waving the white flag. Good job by Mustafa Haida to keep things together. I like the way he's covering up when they're in that close range to prevent those knees from keep coming. Let's see what Sidikovic can do here. Let's see about his finishing and see if he can find a button to hit on that body to shut him down.
Look at Mustafa Haider. Haider's going to knock him out to win this. But the way it stands at the moment, this is a 10-8 round for Stikovic. And he's giving him absolute caning here. Another big clubbing right hand. That throws up the front kick. Oh, man, this is going to be the longest minute in Mustafa Haider's career right now. He is gasping for air. Mustafa Haider, the body is hurt. Sadikovic tries to thread the knee. Haider ties him up. 40 seconds to go. You can see the way that his hands are protecting the body. His chin is open, but he lands a nice body shot off that left hand. Look at Mustafa Haider digging deep to come forward. 25 seconds now. Knee to that damaged left side of the body. Body shot from Mustafa. Tremendous guts and intestinal fortitude from Mustafa Haider. Can he find a Hail Mary shot in the dying stages here, Mustafa? Next uppercut with a head kick. He's going for it, but it will not be enough. And that standing count on Haider in the final round. He'll definitely tip this one over the edge in favour of Adrian Sadikovic. and just close right there boom hits him with that left hook he hurt him on the left hit him on the right with that one look at this check out this side look how he finds his opening the hands come up he sees it boom bingo touches him on the liver didn't look like he really put that much into it but you don't need that much into it when it comes to a liver shot the whole body just shuts down but how tough is mostafa haida to come back after those two brutal body shots michael Howling performance on debut in one Super Series for Sadikovic. <laughs> he I believe he'll get the nod here. Here's Don Lau. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of battle, we turn now to the judges' scorecards. All three judges have called this contest in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from the Super Series is now coming for the Lightweight World Champion. Thanks for watching and don't forget tonight our main card. It's going to be Team Lakai and the Philippines versus the world. Danny Kingad versus Karen Akmatov in our main event. Let's take a closer look at Danny Kingad versus <laughs> Karen Akmatov. Matagal lang na postpone yung laro and ngayon lang ulit na mag-inig kami. Pag mananalo ako sa laban na to, magbibigyan ako ng chance na magkipag-rematch kay DJ and Moraes. Ang ito ba yung katuro na kautog ng kakutus to finish? To finish to pofili niya ang ibasyo pag-ibali so rating. Alam na namin yung game plan. Kanyo siya yung pag-ibalit siya palibu mo yung mawag kukusyo yung Barbie, yung kahit wrestler siya, pagka re-wrestling mo siya, doon na mawawala siya ng ganang makipag-wrestling sa'yo. Muli yung i-valid, ito touch na. Kung sa tingin niya, kaya niya akong i-take down, i-dominate sa ground. There's a left hook for the Filipino! Ay, po, da, hindi mo karoso yung school, kaya nishutin siya ni me, no? I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I have a power, I have an explosive and complete athlete. I can tell you what I have. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Folks, thanks for watching and don't forget our main card. It's Team Lakai, the Philippines versus the world. And you can watch in over 150 countries worldwide through these broadcasters.
Когда сделал матч нокаут на последнем очень бою, я не видел его от него нокаут. После этого он хочет меня нокаутировать, чем стоит ли? It's Team Lakai vs. The World. One Winter Warriors 2 starts now. Potentially 
World Championship level. Dragon, there's a match tonight that's been two years in the making. Danny Kingad versus former world champion Karat Akbatov should be electrifying. Karat Akbatov came out, Dragon, and said he is unimpressed by the skill set of the king. Well, Kairat Akhmatov has the skill set, that world title caliber skill set that led him to 24 straight wins and a world title here in one championship. And he is confident, he is brash, he is ready to earn another shot at the flyweight king, Adriano Marias. But to do so, Danny Kinghead is a beast everywhere. He's extremely well-rounded and he could be the best wrestler on all of Team Makai. It's our Christmas gift to you. One Winter Warriors 2. It's alive. It's a happening. Let's go to our nice. opening ceremony. Are you ready? Go, oh, Dello. Anak ng pating. Nangyari kay Stephen. Uy! No man! So Boy. many eyes! So much expectation on this man, Stephen Lohman! Go, Stephen! Representing Woo. Russia, Murad Ramazano! Russian, Russian, an absolute beast, Murat Ramazanov. Representing Sweden, Sebastian Gardestam. The former world champion is back on the hunt for gold, Sebastian Gardestam. Representing China, Van Lo. He's big, he's mean, he's powerful, he's Van Brong of China. Russia, Vitaly, Big Dash. The former middleweight oh, world champion Vitaly Big Dash of Russia says he wants his belt back. Representing South Korea, one one ill. One one ill plans to spoil the Filipino party tonight in Singapore. Representing the Philippines, Kevin Bellingham. Mm -hmm. Hello. We are one! And Winter Warriors 2 kicks off with a battle of age. Youth versus older status. Jumbo Mark Sangal versus Paul Lamihi. We start Winter Warriors 2 with the highly anticipated debut of Jumbo Mark Sangal. The son of Team Lakai head coach Mark Sung Yao, John Lo grew up learning the fight game surrounded by world champions. Tonight, the young Filipino carries his family and team's legacy onto the global stage of one championship, and he's ready to put on a show. Standing across the circle is the gritty Indonesian veteran, Paul Lumihi. Lumihi has a chance to reverse his fortunes of the lane by taking up the highly talented 19-year-old. The battle-tested striker aims to prove that he is no stepping stone. The night kicks off with two men with everything to prove. Representing Indonesia, Paul the Great King, Lumihi. The Great King, Paul Lumihi. 
Ali here, the 33-year-old Indonesian. And why do I mention his age? Because he's fighting someone tonight who is 14 years his younger, and he wants Ako, the world to do it. Lemay here spoke and smacked uh, about Sengo all in the lead up to this contest, saying Sengo doesn't know what he's getting into. He should go and play video games like a normal teenager. He's had a hard time putting together everything, but this guy has got some legit skills. And the thing about Paul Lumihi is that he actually transitioned away from Jakarta, where he's done most of his training for most of his life, and he actually went out to Bali, Indonesia, and he got to train at Soma along with my buddy Gianni Soba. Putting in some good work, focusing on the ground, and really rounding out his skill set. Yeah, no. He's been very vocal about Sengo. He says Sengo, though he's undefeated, has beaten nobody. He's got promotions. He says Sengo hasn't proven he's got the skills. All he's got is his father's famous last name. Of course, talking about Hans Sengo, the head coach of Tingla Kai. Representing the Philippines, the machine, Jallo Mark Sanko. You talk about famous names in combat sports, the most famous combat sports training name. Really, I know. Is the name Sanko. It's this young man's father, Mark Sanko, of Team Lagai. Thank you, Jallo. Welcome, 
facing his opponent out of the red corner. He stands at 168 centimeters tall, weighing in at 65.3 kilos. Training out of Team Lakai. <laughs> representing <laughs> the Philippines. Introducing the machine, Jello begins your referee in charge mr justin brown go down low <laughs> gentlemen you both know the rules let's keep this match clean obey my commands at all times defend yourself at all times let's watch the back of the head let's watch the low blows touch gloves please back up Mark Sengiao, the first <laughs> of the Team Philippines awesome foursome tonight is the take on the world it's team Where's like guy versus everybody else and, and first up, the Philippines versus Indonesia. The teenager against the 33-year-old veteran who yeah, has a look ready? of mean intent on his kiss. Doesn't want to touch gloves, Lamy. Sangao straight onto the leg kick. Sangao. Team Lakai red trunks on Sangao. Sangao's throwing some early heat, but he gets caught by a left hand there. As he's caught mid spin, Alexi Sankyao mixing the takedowns like I said on the walk. He's got very good back long. attacks. He's very innovative when it comes to attacking from the back. But first, he needs to stick that takedown. Nice clan combinations. Hurt Lumihi. Whoa! All come on, go on. But I come on, but I come on. Lumihi got tagged. Good start here from Sankyao. Attacking that leg early on. He's got to be careful reaching for that leg kick, though. Here comes the first takedown attempt. Picks Double him up. Leg. Beautiful. Easily gets him down. Let's see if he passes the guard here. Solid start inside the opening 50 seconds for John Lowe. Well, I don't know. It was interesting talking to John Lowe earlier, you know. He was saying that he likes the back attacks. He likes to sneak around, get the back. And he actually predicted a twister finish. Wow. Come on, John Lowe. Finish cool. him. Look at him. Here, attempt to attack that arm. Let's see what he's doing with this. He, he can see he's setting it up. He's trying to get that arm down. He tried to get that arm over the head, knowing that he would do this, knowing that he would turn. Now he's got both hooks in. He's controlling that far side arm. Can you find a first round finish of Lumehi? Lumehi stuck in a bad position at the moment. He'd rather have this one on its feet, Lumehi. See, John Lowe's attempt to attack that rear naked choke. He's a little bit high. This is more of a face crank. It's very uncomfortable, but I'm sure Lil Mihi's been here at Soma MMA. Oh, he's getting a now. He's tapping up. Good night, Irene. 1-0 ah! for Team Lakai. And a debut performance of the highest order. <laughs> John Lo Matsenga. Not quite the twist of finish he called, but he did say plan B was the rear naked choke. There's his dad. There's his dad. One down. Wow, Sengiao makes it one and over for Team Lakai and the Philippines tonight with four of them on the ball against the world. And what a way to finish. Look at John Lowe immediately jumping all over Lumihi, hurting him with the hands, throwing the kicks. I like the late kicks he added earlier, but then he chooses to take it to the ground, take Lumihi out of his comfort zone, sinks in the rear naked choke. Finds his way underneath it. Wow, we're and making that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you make a debut inside one championship with a name like Sangiao. Pretty, pretty. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Justin Brown, has called a stop to this contest after one minute and 41 seconds in the first round. For your winner, by way of rear naked choke, Jello Mark John Lowe, now that is how you make a debut inside one championship. For a long time, you've been sitting in the back. For seven years, you've been watching your boys at Team Lakai get it done. How's it feel to finally be under the bright lights? Man, this was my dream since I was a kid. Uh, you know, 
Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to my team, to your family, to my coach, my dad. Thank you so much, Chatri, for letting me show my talent. You told me earlier that you really wanted to get this thing done via submission, and you did just that with the rear naked choke. But you came out really hot and really fast. Did you want to jump on him as quickly as possible and really make a statement? Uh, I don't want to gamble. I know, I know, I know him as a striker, so I just put it down and submit him. So, yeah. Well, you did a great job doing that. I look forward to your return, and I can't wait to see you back inside the circle, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you're so much, winner. Rich. John Lo, Mark Sangyao. Fantastic win for Sangyao. Puts the Philippines 1-0 against the rest of the world. And coming up after the break, Ooh, the Philippines, Stefan Lohman takes on Yusuf Sadalaya. You're watching one, Winter Warriors 2. Thank you. 
that neck is something scary. He is a beast on the ground. He neck hunts continuously. This guy's been doing it so long. I was actually competing when Yusuf Sadalaya made his debut. This guy is a serious threat on the ground. But for the past three fights, we have seen Yusuf Sadalaya really put together a serious skill set in the art of striking. He has been focusing on developing his hands, really working on his footwork, his timing, and his accuracy. And to do that, he has really put together a serious streak. Six straight wins in the bantamweight division. His only loss was the featherweight champion, Tom Lee. And in that time, this guy has really looked impressive. He's got 11 submissions, nine first-round finishes. So do not blink when Sadalaya enters the circle, Michael. Watch a replay of this event in virtual reality in the Horizon Venues app. Available on Quest from Meta this Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern. I'll tell you what, one championship in VR, it's awesome. From Ray. He's highly anticipated one championship debut. Oh. After his original bout against John Lineker. Go, David, go. Well, Lineker, as we know, will compete against Viviano Fernandez next year for the World Bantamweight title. A place where Stefan Lohman wants to be one day dragon. And according to many pundits, it may come very quickly because this guy is going to be one of the best guys. Then Fernandez. My God. I'm running out. By Yusuf Sadalayev. And he knows that is where he needs to be. I asked him about his style. Who would you compare yourself to on Team Lakai? And he said, said, me and Danny King have a very similar style. So that's what you can expect from Stefan Lopez. Very well-rounded style, wrestling heavy, so he can stop the takedown if Sadalayev tries to take it there. But this guy actually started with grappling, unlike a lot of the other Team Lakai members that started with Wushu. Loman started with no key grappling I'm back in high in. So I'm really pumped about this fight, Michael. It's the Philippines versus the world again. Stefan Lohman looking to take Team Philippines to 2 and 0, but he's going up against the maestro. Oh, Stefan! Yusuf Sardalaya. Both men stand at 168 centimeters. Here's Tom Lau. And now, this match is three rounds of five minutes in a one phantom weight mixed martial arts contest. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, he is the number three phantom weight contender, standing at 168 centimeters tall and weighing in at 65.8 kilos, holding a mixed martial arts record of 20 wins and five losses. Training out of Ooflacker Academy, representing Russia. Stepping into action is Yusuf Maestro His opponent out of the red corner. He stands at 168 centimeters tall, weighing in at 65.8 kilos, holding a mixed martial arts record of 14 wins and two losses. Training out of Team Lakai, representing the Philippines. Get ready for Steven, the sniper. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mr. Olivier Cost. All right, guys, watch out for the headbutt. Blow, blow, back of the head. That's fine. You both know the rules. Five, 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 clean. Touch one you want. And back of the head. Anastasia Babayan. To all the viewers in the Philippines watching on One Sport and One Sports Plus. As your boy, Stefan Lohman, tries to take Team Lukai in the Philippines to 2-0. 
against the maestro Yusuf Sadalayev. This one could almost be a world Ready. title eliminator for Sadalayev. We know that Lineker is next up against Bibiano Fernandez next year. Kevin Bellignon currently not in the picture. Sadalayev ranked number third. Next in line, should he win here tonight, perhaps? But Stefan Lawman will have a thing or two to say about that. Both men in southpaw stance here. Be familiar, all red trunks of Team Lakai. Wide stance coming from Lowman. Seems active. Has a bit of a speed advantage here over Sadalayev. See how Sadalayev chooses to counter that speed. Sadalayev. Things a little bit heavier. Lowman who arrives in the circle on an eight fight winning streak. In the previous organization he was with, he cleaned out his division and held the title there for more than 1,000 days. The big left hand landed by Sadalayev early. Asked Sadalayev about catching the kicks of Loman to try to get this match to the ground. And he said that Wushu athletes are very used to having their kicks caught and also countering with them. So it'll be interesting to see how he chooses to negate the kicking ability of Stefan Loman. No attempt to get it to the ground yet, just a filling up process for the maestro. Eats a right hand there to start alive, then eats a left hand. Good short punches from Loman. Looks for the outside leg kick for that lead thigh of the maestro. A must-win fight here for Sardalayev to keep his aspirations of a world title tilt alive. A loss here. And that goes bye-bye. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Sadalayev has one of the longest winning yeah, streaks, yeah, the yeah. longest winning streak in the Bantamweight division. Six. So it's very important for him to, you know, stop somebody and defend that number three spot next to his name. Roman wants nothing more than to jump into the top five with a big win over Sadalayev. Sadalayev backs him off with two left hands. Nicely placed from the Russian. High kick there from Loman. Goes for the headache maker. Inside leg kick from Loma, nicely placed. Outstriking Sardalayev so far. As was expected though, Dragon, if it goes to ground though, going to be a different story. I do believe so, but Loma has very strong wrestling. He's also got good grappling as well. I'd expect him to be able to at least defend a, the first couple initial takedowns, maybe. Um, if not being able to get back up to his feet, if Sardalayev chooses to attempt that takedown. So Live City wants to be very what? cerebral in this opening round and just kind of understand the strengths and weaknesses of Loman and then start to build his game plan as the minutes progress. Certainly a very high in circle IQ on the Maestro. Jab two combination from the Russian. Loman loads up that overhand, but he telegraphed it. See, he's got a very low center of gravity. He changes levels well. He keeps his stance nice and fine. And I think that's going to just aid him in takedown defense. But we've seen in the past three fights from Sadalayev, he has had a ability to keep a match striking and do very well at it. Second of our four, Team Philippines versus the world here tonight. Kevin Bellignon takes on Cornel later, and also Danny King had versus former world's flyweight champion Karen Akmatov in our main event. Chap two, there's the overhand left again from Loman, acting on the orbital with that left hand. Nice pull of the trigger there from the Philippines. Yon, come on, come on. Palo up, palo up, palo up, come on, come on. Come on. Loman, can he capitalize? Nice David. Resets himself. Loman's got heat in that left hand. Gaging things very well. Sadalaya Come on. Take down here because of that left hand. Come on, Sadalaya. Regardless of how great that beard looks on Sadalaya, he's gonna crumble. The ring, the ring. Measuring. Oh! Oh, knock out! It's 2-0 for Team Philippines versus the world. The most dangerous. Oh, Stephen Loman. What a day for him. Woo! What a fight, Stephen. Yeah, you know. 
Papa, ha? Pa! Pa! Hello! Lakas nun, natumba pa, ho? Oh my God! Let out! Oh, thank you, nerd! Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Olivier Cost, has called a stop to this contest after four minutes and nine seconds. Two down. Tangi na wala na. Or your winner by way of technical. Hospital na si Sao. Si Yusof. Asa na si Yusof. Hospital na. Knockdown. Nakatayo ba? Hello. Na ulo eh. Lili Carsonas. Lili Car. Bibiano Fernandez. Christian Lee. Martin Nguyen. Woo! Galing mo Tepen. Pak! Napangapal eh. Pak! Pak! Stephen Loman with the first round KO. That's a debut, my friend. How do you feel? Double. Right now, I'm uh, very happy because uh, I got a knockout win for this number three round contender, Yusuf. And uh, I did I prepare a lot uh, for this fight together with my teammates. And I did my best. It just paid off. I'm very yeah. happy. Yeah, your preparation really showed the timing on that left he hand was impeccable. Now you really had a, things going your way early in that match with that left hand. Was that something you saw, or was that something you planned ahead of the match? We are always uh, doing that combination. Uh, we practice a lot, and I just get my timing. I got, I time his uh, punches and once he comes in there we go the plan went and that's it well we look forward to seeing you again my friend ladies and gentlemen your winner Stefan Lohman yo Stefan Lohman takes team Philippines to 2 and 0 oh against the rest of the Woo! world what an amazing performance and folks we Woo, in 2022 on January 14 with heavy hitters we have two titles on the line. Zhong Jinnan takes on Ayaka Biura in the main event for the strongweight world yeah. title. And Roman Cricklia takes on Murat Aigun in the co-main yeah. event. Tonight, former one middleweight ah, world champion Vitaly Big Dash faces Chinese finisher Fan Rong. Big Dash. In 2017, Big Dash put on one of the most unforgettable fights in one when he defended yeah, his yeah, middleweight yeah, belt yeah. against the then Impressive. young and hungry Ong Wah Sung. There's a kick to the body. Some heavy blows coming just in the dying moments of this opening round. Daddy King Ad. But he's taking a lot of punishment on his back now. Kevin. Here he is back on the ground. For the upkick there, they hit him in the face. Dash was more than able to back off and out of range. Comes down with that stunning right hand to the side of the face. Four KOs, four submissions on his record in that unbeat 8 no record. Looks like we're going to add... His first decision victory. As he moves towards retaining his...
undefeated with a 70% finishing rate. Those four knockouts come from him getting on top of people and literally just laying those fists to their face repeatedly. Murad Ramazanov is a problem when he gets that takedown. Sebastian Kadastan's career. This is the big comeback on the way back to the belt. He's a former two-time one belt to world champion. He's been at rock bottom in his life. He's come back from that. the action begins your referee in charge mr justin in the brown athlete center athlete center please gentlemen you're both on the rules let's keep this match clean obey my commands at all times defend yourself at all times let's watch the back of the head 
Let's watch the low blows. Touch gloves if you want. Back up. Former two-time welterweight world champion on the comeback trail tonight against a man who will do anything to get a title crack. Good. Sebastian Canastar. Judge. 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 Murat Rabazanov. Rabazanov wants it on the ground. Sebastian wants to keep it standing. Let's see if the elbows can come into play early and the knees from Sebastian Canastar. The most knockouts in one welterweight history. Ramazanov, 10 and 0, 70% finishing rate. Looking loose at the moment. Kanastam fires up the high left round kick. Yeah, he's circling around, trying to stay light on his feet. That's important. You don't want to stand stationary in front of Murad Ramazanov because he's got a great blast double leg. You can see Murad's trying to be patient. Keep his hands nice and high. He knows those high kicks are going to be coming from Sebastian. Patient start here from Ramazanov. Sebastian trying to thread that lead hand. Good hit movement so far from the Swede. Ramazanov's got a decent right hand on him. He's got a cocked and ready here. Can he pull the trigger on it though? There it goes. It's a right hand to a single leg attempt. Kanastam trying to stay vertical here, Dragon. This is going to tell us a lot. This first takedown attempt here from Murad Ramazanov. He's got that underhook on his right side. Let's see how he uses He might try to turn and put him down onto his right side, or he might try to transition into another takedown. This is going to be very important for Sebastian Kanastam's not only scoring, but also for his confidence as well. If he can stop this takedown, it's going to lead him you know, for greater confidence as this match goes on. But Murad Ramazanov has changed to a single leg. Michael Fry crotch. Can he affect the takedown? One minute 40 already down in the first round set for three. Remember, judged as an overall contest, not as three individual rounds. Nice little move right there to try to take out that lead support leg of Sebastian. Sebastian might want to try to widen his legs a little bit to have a little bit better balance here. He's doing a good job with his left hand, keeping that overhook to keep Murad Ramazanov from doing this, changing levels. Good job by Sebastian Kadasov so far. What is Ramazanov trying to do by hooking the leg here, Dragon? He's trying to create, disrupt the balance. You can see right here, he might be trying to pull him to his right, but he chooses to go the other way. Nice little elevation there and takes him down. So with uh, Ramazanov inside the guard of the former two-time world champion, what does Kanastam need to do and be careful of here? Oh, well, he's going to try to, uh, from this position, the only thing more okay. Ramazanov can really do is ground and pound. So he's utilizing, you can see now he's trying to pass into half guard. He pushes down the left leg of Sebastian Kanastam. Now he's in the half guard. Now he's got heavy ground and pound. Mua Ramazanov likes this position. It's going to be important for Sebastian Kanastam to get flat on. He does not want to stay flat on his back. He wants to be on his left shoulder so he can create some kind of movement. He doesn't want to allow Murad Ramazanov to flatten him out and start laying in those big paws to his face. Looking for the elbow to the top of the noggin there is Kanastam. Abbasov, uh, Ramazanov, I should say, in this advantageous position. Goes the body, the then goes head off the left hand. Just a caution for the referee not to strike the back of the head. Tries to wreck the elbow across the jawline and shade the stubble of Kadastam. So you can see how Kadastam's being active in the half guard here. He's trying to create movement. He's trying to avoid this, right? We don't want to. You don't want to see uh, Murad Ramazanov getting that left leg out from between the legs and passing the guard into full mount. You can see that's what he's trying to do. Now he's in the corner. Oh no! Mount. Now he's there. Now he's in full mount. Bad spot for Sebastian Kadastam to be. Sebastian needs to create that movement, and he's going to. Give up his back in the process, but nice little float over there. 
And look at this. Kanastam back to his feet. Gets out of a sticky predicament. Backed up against the wire now. I've been watching a lot of training footage from Kanastam on IG. And we're seeing that he's trying to really scramble. He doesn't want to stay still. It's very taxing to scramble like this. To always be moving. It's very difficult. It drains on your gas tank. And it can just suck a lot of your energy out. But it's very important that he stays mobile in these grappling exchanges. He needs to create these scrambles. Sebastian's got those dagger elbows. You can see him crack down to the collarbone, to the tricep area of Ramazan. Justin Brown encouraging more action from both men here. What's Ramazanov trying to affect with 20 seconds to go, Dragon? He's trying to go for that body lock. He's trying to get his legs, his hands wrapped around the body. But Sebastian's doing a good job with the wizard. But he gives up his back in the process. Looks like the round is going to come to an end. Ramazanov could get a big takedown here in the last 10. Spinning back elbow possibly for Sebastian. Stop! There it is. End of the round. We go to the towels. Five minutes down. Ten remaining. A confident swagger back to the corner there for the former two-time world champion. This was the first takedown. The only takedown, really, of that round. He was able to get him down. He got into half guard. He passed into mount. But here, you can see Sebastian was able to protect the back, get back up to the standing position, and end the round for the first five minutes, at least in that standing position. So that's good. That's confidence building for Sebastian Kadastan. Sebastian Kadastam, what are you telling the former world champion to do in round two? He's got to try to keep his back off of the circle wall. He's got to continually yep. stay moving, and when he does yep. get tight into the, 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 inside that clinch, he's got to start pushing down on that head, create space, create movement. He did a good job in the first five. Let's see if he can continue in the second. Ramazano faking. How long will it take for the Russian to get it to the ground? Ground kick there from Kadastam circles off clock counterclockwise. Staying away from that right side, the power side. Ramazanov pretty much only uses the punches to close the distance, to kind of get his feet into position and into that range to shoot for the single leg. This is really important for Sebastian to start touching him up on the feet and also hurt him as he's coming in. When Ramazanov tries to close that distance, Kadasam needs to throw uppercuts and needs to start to deter Ramazanov from approaching in that manner. Ooh, the heel met with the cup there of uh, Ramazanov. Illegal groin strike, that accidental from Sebastian Kadasam. Ramazanov will have the duration of one round or a full five minutes to recover here. All right. Looks like he's okay to go on. That's right. Around, the groin. Nerve signals get launched to the brain at a speed of around 265 miles an hour. Would not like to know that, Dragon. Super fast. Very fast. Left took no right hand for company, though. Look to drop the lead down to the body there, Katastan. Can he employ some of the Muay Thai skills here? Left hook again, but no follow through. No kicks underneath and no right cross. You can see it's kind of a tale of two athletes with Ramazanov on the feet. He's wide-eyed. He's trying to stay composed, but he does this. The, book one is, the minute he gets in tight with that body lock and he starts working for those takedowns, he becomes a completely different beast. Good balance so far by Kadastan, but again, it's these takedown attempts. They just keep coming with Ramazanov. This is going to be important for him right here to maintain this half guard. I like the movement from Kadastan in the first five minutes, but you can see that Ramazanov just slowly broke him down with his advancing of position. That's the definition of ground control. If you can get on top of somebody and not just lie in their guard, but advance your position, move to half guard, move to mount, that's how you gain ground control. And that scores a lot higher than just aggression. Comments from a bloke who knows what he's talking about. Congratulations on your purple belt, by the way, Mitch. Thank you very much, sir. Long time. Long enough. Half guard position here for Murad Ramazanov. He comes in undefeated 10-0. Four knockouts, three submissions, Ramazanov. 
A win tonight should put him in contention for a world title showdown with Cameron Kadasov. And can Kadasov get to his feet? He did in the first round, Dragon. Yeah, he was able to, but he did that off of a kind of a mistake by Ramazanov. He just he adjusted his position to get the back, and he just slid off the top. When it's in these positions, it's going to be a lot. Truly effective phase, Murad. Body shots here from the Russian. Dribbles a knee. Remember, knees to the head of a grounded opponent are legal under our global mixed martial arts rule set. It's interesting with the head position of Ramazanov. See how he keeps his head on, uh, like almost underneath the arm, and that really negates the fact that uh, Kanastam is trying to dig an underhook so he can create some movement. This is where the scramble happened in the first five. Let's see what happens here in the second attempt here. Good job. That was a float over. Nice job by Ramazanov to maintain that back position. Back down again on his knees. Genuflect position now for Kanastam. Yeah. This is so draining, Michael, to have some a grappler like Ramazanov on top of you and he's just changing positions and wearing on you, but to Kanasam's credit, he was able to get back up to his feet. It's similar to like we see from the champ, the two division champion Rene de Rip. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a little bit different style. Like Rainier de Ritter has more of a BJJ style, you can see with his submission attempts. Ramazanov is just trying to manhandle people. He's just trying to ragdoll you. you. His takedown attempts, his guard passing, and his ground pound. Which one did you always dread going up against, the wrestler or the BJJ guy? It's the wrestler. It's this type of style. This is demoralizing to get on top. You know, you can make defense submissions, and you can also try to create scrambles and movement, but when you're dealing with a wrestler of this capability, they're used to doing this. Everything you do is just draining. You try to get up, and it sucks the energy out of you when you drag you back down. Down. You try to stand up like he's doing here, and he keeps the body lock, and he's going to get you back down again. And it's just, it's, it drains on your soul. You see Justin Brown telling Sebastian not to hang on to the cage. Try for a spinning back elbow. Trying his luck to no avail, though. Two rounds down, one to go. Just like that, how he crumbles to the mat, right? He falls, and he just, you can see his soul is just gone. Inside the Singapore Indoor Stadium for one, Winter Warriors two. We're still to come tonight. We've got two more team Philippines versus the world. And the Philippines are 2 and 0 at the moment. The end swell under the left eye there, the cold press and the ice in the back of the neck of Sebastian Kanastan, who has some damage on the face. Meanwhile, very composed, a little bit of Vaseline on the eyebrows of Brad Ramazano. Okay, Dragon, once again, play coach for Sebastian. Sebastian needs to deal with the takedown. He's got to be a little bit more active. He's got some moments on the feet. When the, that, that first minute of the beginning, when these guys are standing right here, you can see Ramazanov isn't that confident on his feet, and he's just waiting for that time to get into that takedown. Sebastian needs to utilize that opportunity to really try to hurt him. He's still in it. We've seen Sebastian knock people out in those later rounds, so he can still do it, but he's got to take advantage of it right here. But I think he's gun shy because he's worried about the takedown. Is that why Dragon, do you dare throw a leg kick against a wrestler like this or not? I haven't seen Ramazanov really catch a lot of leg kicks and charge forward, but its I wouldn't mind seeing some calf kicks coming from Kanastam. He's got a good low kick. It's hard to reach down that low to catch a calf kick, so that might be a good strategy, but this is his opportunity. These are his shining glimmers of hope where he can really start to do something. Left hook there from Sebastian. He was doing that in the second round, throwing the left hook, but there was no right cross for company, and that's the problem here. You see, he's, he's throwing the looping hand. Ramazanov's backing away from it. And while he's on the back foot, Sebastian has to come through with something else, not just rely on these single punches.
Richards. But he also has to close that distance. And every time he closes that distance, that's when he's getting taken down. But is it a risk he needs to take Dragon? At this point, because not, nothing else is working for him. At this point, yes. You know, I think in the second round, he was hesitant. You know, right around that minute seven mark, he was hesitant because he was taken down. He was dragged out. But here, he's got to go for it. Three minutes 40 remaining in the comeback of Sebastian Karasam, the former two-time world champion. Says he wants the gold again, prepared to go on another run for it, but a big hurdle should he lose tonight. Ramazanov, should he win, will most likely get a crack at Cameron Abbasov, the champion. And what a match that would be. But you cannot rule out Sebastian. He has shocked us throughout his entire career when people wrote him off and he proved the critics wrong time and time again. He's overcome tremendous personal difficulties and here he is at the top of the world once more and throwing that high kick. Would love to see him on the inside, launch the elbows and knees, but maybe he's going to get taken down again in a moment. See, that's what happens when he commits to the right hand, Michael. You wanted to see him throw the left hook and then the right hand. As soon as he throws to the right hand, Mura Ramazanov has a very good sense of distance. And he knew that he would be close enough to get the body lock, get the takedown, and now he's sitting there in mount. It's a bad spot to be. Let's see if he chooses to give up his back again and try to create a scramble here. So Sebastian's been mounted in every round so far, right, Dragon? Yeah, see, here he is. He's given up his back. But good job. He gave up the back, waited for him to try to take the back, and then he pushed down on the left, the right leg of Murad Ramazanov to get back into half guard. That was tricky. Murad trying to mount him again does for a second time in this round. Let's see what the Russian can do from here. Is he going to posture up and land the GMP? Sort of bucking there to Sebastian. Yep, there he is, giving up the back again. He's trying to go underneath the leg there that time. Ramazanov knew it. He's, he's doing better work inside mount. He's trying to drive the hips down, I think, to prevent it. Watch Kanasam. Kanasam does it again. Is, is that a common defense against someone mounting you to give you back like that? Um, you sometimes, I think, but he's also got a pretty good technique of waiting for that leg to kind of slide over and to get a hook in from Ramazanov, and then when he feels that leg coming over, he pushes it down into half guard. It's a nice little uh, technique to maintain it, but Ramazanov just keeps coming forward trying to advance the position into mount. It might just be a good idea for Ramazanov just to sit here and utilize ground and pound. It is this grinding, training performance that the Dragons spoke about earlier on. Work to finish. Murad Ramazanov just tiring out Sebastian Kadasan. You hear Justin Brown saying work the finish. He's mounted him again here, Ramazanov. All over Sebastian on the ground. And with 45 seconds to go, time is the big enemy of the Swede. Side control now for Murad. Oh, knee cracked him on the orbital. It was like an eggshell exploding. My goodness. You heard me just looking at it, Dragon. <laughs> Ramazanov should sit here and mount now. Let's see if Kanasam tries that sneaky little escape again. Is it the fourth mount this round? Yeah, this is a, well, it's just kind of been a constant positional change um, from Ramazanov. Ramazanov's got the body triangle right now. He's floats over into mount. He's trying to look for that finish. He's trying to get the stoppage win here. I know he wanted to get a big stoppage win, but Kanasam's got much better in his takedown defense and his, uh, his grappling ability. Last minute, last second attempt, I should say, for a choke there from Kurat uh, Ramazanov. And oh, wow. Was that the knee to the head that busted him open? My goodness. Ramazanov dominant on the ground dragon for 15 minutes. Yeah, that, that knee right there could have been the eggshell <laughs> that you were speaking about. Very impressive. Is he going to go 11 and 0? I believe so. Anybody is going to have a hard time with this takedown defense coming from him look at this just here's sebastian kanasam went to the will one too many times i like the adjustments made by ramazanov to change things up and not allow kanasam to really get into a good position there was that knee to the head let's go to tom ladies and gentlemen after three rounds of battle we turn now to the judges scorecards 
All three judges have called this contest in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from the Tremendous wrestling, a grinding performance, punishing Sebastian Canastam on the ground consistently. And later on tonight, our main event brought to you by JBL Dance. And listen, in Philippines, young king Danny Kinger takes on the former flyweight world champion, the wrestling star, Karen Akbatov. Matagal lang na post po ng laro and ngayon lang ulit na mag-meet kami pag mananalo.
Welcome back to Singapore. What a night it's been so far. You're watching one championship winter Warriors 2 from inside the Singapore Indoor Stadium where we've still got plenty more action coming your way. And up next, a battle of two big fellas. The former world's middleweight champion Vitaly Big Dash is back and he takes on Chinese powerhouse Fun Rong. Vitaly Big Dash has been in some of the most thrilling fights in one championship history. Vitaly Big Dash drops him, jumping in for the kill! After suffering the first two losses of his career, the former world champion turned things around with the brutal submission of Japan's Yuki Nimura. Now he wants to continue that momentum by taking out dangerous contender, Von Roll. Victories over Sharif Mohammed and Yuri Simone. Von Rome believes he's only one win away from getting a second shot at two division, one world champion, Rainier de Ritter, the man that spoiled his one debut. A former world champion and a championship hopeful go to battle, and with 21 finishes between them, nobody expects Vitaly Big Dash and Von Rome to go the distance. Representing China! King Kong Warrior, Van Long. Here he comes. The King Kong Warrior, Van Rong. Only one loss in one championship. That was on his debut to Rinya Derrida, the two-division world champion. On that night, RDR snapped a 12-fight winning streak for Van Rong. And now, Van Rong wants redemption. He says the belt will make it all the more sweeter. But first, he's got to get past the former world champion, Vitaly Big Dash. Van Rong says Big Dash is fragile. And he says Big Dash has no chin. Yeah, for Van Rong to be successful tonight, he's going to have to push a very high pace. And the only two losses of Big Dash's career have happened in later rounds. So it's going to be very important that he's able to push that high volume and be very aggressive everywhere. He wants to mix in the takedowns with the striking. He believes that Big Dash's biggest weakness is going to be the ground game, especially on his back. So he wants to put Big Dash down on the ground, smash on him, pass the guard, and then ultimately look for submissions. But if that fails, if Big Dash has got that good takedown defense, he plans to outstrike him everywhere. Watch a replay of this event in VR in the Horizon Venues app. Available on Quest from Meta. This Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern. You may even find Hitch and I on there. champion with the model good looks. Vitaly Big Dash looking to make a big comeback here. So many people around the world have been waiting for the return of this man. He also had a little bit of smack to talk on his opponent. He said Van Rong is too slow. He can't handle my athleticism. He said Van Rong hasn't beaten any tough opposition in one yet and is nowhere near my level. Yeah, Vitaly Big Dash carries big power with him. He's got several knockouts. He can put you down with the hands. He can also knock you out with the feet. Vitaly Big Dash is a serious contender in the middleweight division. The former middleweight champion has fought everybody from Ung La to Igor Spirat. The thing that I really like about Vitaly Big Dash is his well-rounded skill set. He's as good a striker as he is a wrestler. He can wrestle just as well as he can grapple. He really puts everything together nicely. He's got good stamina. He can push things deep. He's a fun fighter to watch, Michael. Vitaly Big Dash, the former one middleweight world champion, a 90% finishing rate, four knockouts and five 
subs, Dragon. Yeah, and like I said, he is very well-rounded. He has a very high finishing rate. He's always looking to end the match. He talked to me a lot about the weaknesses of Fan Rong, and Fan Rong says he's younger, he's faster, but Vitaly Big Dash doesn't see that as really being a problem. He's going to lean on his experience and really try to put a fast pace on Fan Rong immediately. You figure a win here for Fan Rong sets him up for a showdown with Ong Lan Sang for a world title contenders match, and so too Big Dash for maybe a trilogy match against Ong La. Here's how they stack up. It's going to be Russia versus China at a catch weight of 95 kilograms. And look there at the heights. Both big boys with Fun Rong one centimeter the taller. Let's meet them now with Tom Lau. And now, this match is three rounds of five minutes in a 95 kilo one catch weight mixed martial arts contest. Introducing first. Out of the blue corner, he stands at 185 centimeters tall, weighing in at 94.1 kilos, holding a mixed martial arts record of 14 wins and two losses. Training out of Long Yun MMA, representing China. Stepping into action is King Kong Warrior, Ben Ru his opponent out of the red corner he is a former one middleweight world champion standing at 184 centimeters tall and weighing in at 94.3 kilos holding a mixed martial arts record of 10 wins and two losses training out of Ahmad fight team representing Russia get ready for Rithali begins your referee in charge mr olivier cost i guess watch out for the headboard low blow back of the head and spine five hair five clean search for if you want to buy your corner fan wrong says vitaly big dash has no chin he's fragile and easily broken vitaly big dash the former middleweight world champion says fan wrong cannot handle right, just, his athleticism just, just time Ready? Ready? Talk. We don't expect this one to go the distance. <laughs> Two big units inside the circle right now. Van Rong will try and plant that right hand on the inside. We'll try and plant that right hand on the inside. <laughs> Van Ronk says he wants to look for a takedown early, and there it is. He looks pretty changed levels, but good defense coming from Vitaly Big Dash. Rip kick there from Big Dash in the blue. Van Ronk's known as a big puncher with some serious power in that right hand. I'd expect Vitaly Big Dash to really start laying in the kicks, start utilizing the kicks and keep him at that distance. Outside leg kick, second one of the year. round so far for Big Dash. Hit him at common peroneal nerve, just above the knee. One way to slow down the punching prowess of Fun Rong, who shoots him for an attempt to take down. But Big Dash will have none of that. Yeah, there's another takedown attempt coming from Fan Rong. He's gonna, he might have to adjust to plan B, which is going to be more of a boxing rank little bit better because Vitaly Big Dash has good takedown defense as we've seen in the past. Vitaly Big Dash is coming off of a big win over against Nimura where he locked in a nasty first triangle arm bar. Remember that? Nice overhand right there from Fan Rong. Be confident here, the Chinese athlete. Spinning back elbow, Big Dash. A little acrobatic in their striking outside leg kick Fan Rong and Big Dash just said no, nothing in that. Gotta do better. Open trade round kicks to the body. It's up the leg. Take down there from Big Dash. Fan Rong gonna get a hold of the arm for the arm bar. Wow, immediately dropped into an arm bar. Big Dash looks like he's got his elbow almost past. He might be safe. Fan Rong might have to adjust, transition to something else. You see, now he's got the arm out. 
was a lightning fast submission coming from Fun Rong after he slammed him. Good job by this high big dash to work with the pass. Be surprised how quick Fun Rong hooked under that arm. Yeah, that was lightning fast off of the slam from Big Dash. This is where Big Dash likes to be. He likes to sit in the guard and just kind of hammer on people until they sort of uh, allow him to pass and work into a more dominant position. But Fan Rong's got good jujitsu off his back. There was a time when Vitaly Big Dash was one of the most feared fighters in all of one championship when he held the gold that was eventually taken from him by Ong Lan San. Somewhat controversially, Big Dash argues that he believes he beat Ong Lan that night. If he wins tonight, you figure maybe we will see a trilogy match between Ong Lan and Vitaly. You've also got the middleweight king, RGR, looking for his next opponent, too. So, with a big knockout win or a big submission, Big Dash could put his name right into contention for that title. Same with Fan Rong, though. Especially how fast Fan Rong slapped onto that submission. Jab to right hand there from Fan Rong. Drifts back to center circle. 130 remains. First round of three. Charged as an overall 15-minute contest and not as three individual rounds. A lot of feints coming from Fan Rong. I like that. I like to go back to that low kick, too. Mm. I may mean, just plant the target area on the chin of Fan Rong. Looks for a double leg takedown, does Vitaly. Fan Rong stops it, tries to pump an uppercut. Front kick there from Vitaly. Body shot from the big Russian. The Russians are one on one tonight. A loss to Yusuf Sadalayev against Stefan Lohman. A win for Ramazanov over Sebastian Kadastar. Another double leg attempt here from Big Dash. Good defense so far from Fan Rong, but Vitaly was able to run him over and secure that double leg. Let's see what Vitaly can get here off his back or off the top. Fan Rong's going to the butterfly hook. See how he has his legs on the inside of the thighs of Vitaly Big Dash. He's going to try to create a little bit of elevation. Cracks down with the elbow does Vitaly, lowers himself again, foot on hips here from Fun Rong. Vitaly trying to work the left hand of the side of the Chinese athlete's head. Where does Fun Rong go from here, Dragon? Well, he's got one foot on the hip, so he's going to be able to create a little bit of space. See how he's elevating Big Dash? But then Big Dash can That's twist okay. his hips to pop those legs off so he can settle back down into the guard. Big Dash loves this position when he starts dropping that ground and pound. Oh. Good way for Big Dash to end the first five. Five minutes down, ten minutes remaining in his catchweight contest between Vitaly Big Dash of Russia and Fan Rong of China. Folks, let us know your thoughts wherever you're watching around the world at one championship on all your social media platforms. Yeah, this is that first takedown landed by Vitaly, but then we saw that. We saw that arm bar immediately snatched onto by Fan Rong. Vitaly Big Dash was able to defend, get that arm out. Then he landed another takedown. A very interesting first five minutes. A lot of aggression coming from both athletes. If the match was stopped right now, I might give a slight edge to Vitaly Big Dash. Okay, Mitchell Dean Chilson, play coach for us. What are you telling Fun Rong to do in his corner? I want to see Fun Rong be a little bit more aggressive on the feet. I want to see him throw that right hand and try to hurt Big Dash, especially when they get close together. Big Dash, I want to see Big Dash take him down again. He's doing good on the feet, but I think he's going to have more success on top with ground and pound. Big Dash, the former middleweight oh. world champion. Fun Rong, who would love a crack at the gold held by Renya de Ritter of Holland. Boring with that lead hand, the Russian. Backs off the back, lead does Vitaly. Good smacking right there. Didn't turn the knuckles over, but... It was a slap, wasn't it? Yeah, there? nice parry. You can see Big Dash left his lead hound out there a little too long, and Fan Rong was able to parry it down and come over with his right hand. He needs to do more of that. He needs to keep that right hand active and busy, especially when Big Dash closes that distance. Oh, spinning heel kick. How do you do from Vitaly? The big fella winds up. And a rib kick from Vitaly Big Dash. Counters over the top, there's Fun Rong. Vitaly getting more aggressive now. Turning up the aggressive meter in the strike in the former world champion. Double league takedown attempt, and Fun Rong stops it. 
Good takedown attempt there to get it nice and deep, but it was a good defense on the first one. Let's see how he handles the second one here. Big Dash is in on the legs. He's looking at his hands clasped, and he gets it down. Nice work from Vitaly Big Dash. Folks, don't forget still to come. Double main event. Philippines versus the world. Bellignon, one one ill. Danny Kinga and Kyrat Akhmatov. Van Rong's good off his back. He's got the butterfly hooks. He's got an active guard. He's not just trying to keep him in close guard and hold on to the position waiting for a stand-up. He's trying to stay active, look for submissions, and create stand-ups. Big Dash thought about grabbing the leg onto the leg there. It looks like Van Rong's going after the leg now. Looks like he's got that Ashigarami, that leg entanglement. He's going after a heel hook. Good defense from Vitaly Big Dash to separate the legs, get the leg off the hip, and turny. Look at Fan Rong getting deep into that heel hook. Vitaly Big Dash might be able to float over that he does. Oh, but Fan Rong blocks the leg and prevents him from spinning. But good adjustment by Vitaly. Fantastic crown battle here in the th second round of three. Oh, the heel hook, how painful are those, Dragon? Have you ever been, uh, had a heel hook slapped on you? Yeah, by Shinya. It's terrifying. By Shinya? Your career, like, flashes. Flashes. You're like the movement for the rest of your life flashes before your eyes. It's horrible. It's horrible. What is Vitaly looking to do here, Dragon? He's just trying to settle into this position. You can see how Fan Rong's sitting there in half guard. Right, he's almost working his way past, but he's got that butterfly hook. I like how he utilizes these butterfly hooks to create movement. He's not just stacking in his guard. He's always trying to stay active, utilizing overhooks and underhooks with his arms to create that movement and also control the posture of Vitaly Big Dash. Vitaly likes that left elbow. Forearm across the throat here of Fun Rong at the moment. Rear elbow then. Cracks through the knuckles off the right. Shoots to the left hand is Vitaly. Knife is strike to the body there from Vitaly Big Dash. Goes body and head, and there's an elbow again from the big Russian. You can see Fan Rong's flat on his back. He doesn't want to stay there. He's got to try to get off onto his side and create that movement. You can see Big Dash. This is what I was talking about. You asked me what he Big Dash needed to do. He's so hard to deal with when he's on top of you. He's so strong. He's so powerful. He's got really heavy hips, and he can just control your position, and then he picks his shots very carefully. He's not just flailing on you. He makes sure each one counts. Those elbows trying to crack the bridge of the nose of Fan Rong. <coughs> Fan Rong's got to stop him from posturing up and landing those elbows. Here he goes again. There's another elbow. Cracks him orbital just under the right eye. He's got to try to get onto his side. There you go. Create a little bit of movement. Create a little bit of space. But he's having a hard time doing it. He's got the butterfly hooks. Now he's got a butterfly guard. He's got an overhook on one side. Let's see if he can create a little bit of movement here. He's got 60 seconds to do something. I wonder if Vitaly wasn't playing some, some games with Fun Ron. He seemed to say something to the Chinese athlete before he landed that big elbow. Maybe trying to get in Fun Ron's mind here. Fun Ron almost got the sweep. Almost created that space, but he wasn't. quick enough on the get up good control from Vitaly Big Dash to stay on top and start dropping those hammers just getting confirmation Dragon Vitaly actually asked Fan Rong are you good and I think Fan Rong said yes and then Vitaly cracked him with an elbow are you good now <laughs> you're good then you won't be soon <laughs> trying to pin that leg Half guard here for Vitaly. Big Dash goes to the waist there's the elbow again those elbows are measured well, it's almost like a mounted position. You can see he's only kind of has that knee shield Again. up a little bit to defend, to create that, but he's not doing anything with it. You can see but Big Dash is trying to great find that one leg, applying a lot of pressure to that knee right there. He has a triangle, but not a whole lot for Van Rong to go. Now, the tight Big Dash needs to get right back to that position and do the same thing for the final five. Is he blowing a little heavy there, Dragon, Van Rong? So it's a it's very tough to stay in those positions and to try to defend and to stay contracted like that. That's a beautiful takedown by Vitaly Big Dash. The first one failed, the second one got it. Here's the attempted heel hook by Fan Rong. Nice little defense. You can see Vitaly tried to float over. Good. 
Sharp made an adjustment there to maintain that position and to stay on top, and that's where he was able to ride out the rest of those that time, just to sit there, drop ground and pound, look for key shot selection, and really do good work from the top position. A little bit of vertical Muay Thai from Vitaly Big Dash as we move into the third round here inside the Singapore Indoor Stadium. You're watching one championship, Winter Warriors 2, our final show of 2021 and wrapping up Christmas early and then we're back on January 14 for heavy hitters did you call that vertical Muay Thai isn't horizontal yeah on the ground oh my gosh a rare mistake when you pulled me on a dragon good job I applaud you left hook right hand there from Fun Rong High kick from Big Dash. He used the high kicks well at the start of the second round. We saw a spinning back kick, a spinning heel kick from the Russian. Now Fun Rong on top position. Guillotine. Guillotine here by Big Dash. Has he got a dragon? Let's see. He's got the arm in. Guillotine, a lot of plan, a lot of pressure to the head. It looks like it's pretty deep there. Vitaly Big Dash taps out Fun Rong at the start of the third round with a guillotine. Beautifully done from the former world champion. In for a takedown, Vitaly Big Dash jumped on the arm and guillotine, applied the squeeze. You could see his head was deep into that choke, and he just started cranking and got the tap. The Russians finished the night two and one. Wings to Big Dash and Ramazanov lost to the Maestro Satellite earlier on. Is down. Look at this. He shoots in for the takedown, leaves his head in the wrong spot. Vitaly Big Dash has a good squeeze, applies the choke, and then gets the tap. You can see at the end, they had a little talk, they had a little conversation. I was wondering if Von Rong was asking about the triangle to the leg. You can see that Vitaly Big Dash triangled his legs and kind of applied a pressure. I wonder if that bothered his knee a little bit. Let's go to Tom Lau to make it all official. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Mr. Olivier Cost, has called a stop to this contest after 41 seconds in the third round. For your winner, by way of guillotine choke, Vitaly Big Dash! It's only Big Dash at his back, and he may be staring down the barrel of either a trilogy match against Paul. He's going to ask him in just a moment's time. But Tali Big Dash, what an incredible performance, and you're back inside the winner's circle. Do you have an opponent in mind for your next challenge? Отличная победа, Виталий. Кого из оппонентов, с кем вы хотите сражаться в следующий раз? У меня только один соперник сейчас на уме. Это Анла. Я тебя жду. Ты следующий. I have only one opponent in mind. That's Sangwar. I'm waiting for you. Come over. Oh, I'd like to see that trilogy fight. That sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. Now, I have to ask, it looked like you triangled his leg there in the beginning of that round exchange, and it looked like you applied a lot of pressure to the knee. Did he comment on it there at the end of the match? Я с нетерпением жду этой трилогии, и в начале э, вашего сражения я видел, что ты зажал его колено. Он что-то прокомментировал? Мы пообщались немного, так как мы в хороших отношениях с Ваном. Я его спросил, насколько был близок к этому приему. Я готовил на тренировке, он сказал, колено должно быть чуть ниже. Я взял чуть выше, и не получилось. Ah, uh, okay. Well, it looked like you guys were having a lot of conversations during the match. You hit him with an elbow, and did you ask if he was okay? Я видел, что вы переговаривались во время вашего матча, и когда ты его ударил локтем, он вылет опять что-то переговаривались о чем-то. Я у него спросил, с тобой все хорошо? Он сказал, да, я еще добавил разочек. I asked him if he's okay, and he said, I'm okay, and then I added a bit more. <laughs> yes, 
you did. You did a lot more than that with that guillotine finish. We look forward to seeing you again. You're a winner. Do you have something else to say? Something. Something. Well, yeah. Я посвящаю этому эту победу своему сыну Кириллу, который сейчас смотрит, точнее будет смотреть. Сынок, я тебя люблю. Это победа для тебя. And I dedicate this win to my son Kirill, who is watching this match. Kirill, I love you very much, and this victory is for you. Well, I'm sure your son is very excited to see you back in the winner circle, and so are we. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Vitali Big Dash. Vitali Big Dash back in the winner circle, and he has called out Oman Sun for a trilogy match. Folks, make sure you head over to the One Championship YouTube page. Already look for our documentary part one of the anatomy of Angela Lee. It is incredible. Two years is a lot of time off, but you know, physically, even though I wasn't able to keep up with my training, you know, mentally I was still in the game and definitely, you know, reflecting on my career, um, you know, my skills and techniques and and. There's so much room for growth and improvement, and I get excited thinking about it. You know, um, I was so excited to get back in the gym and start training again. And um, you know, my camp has officially begun. So I don't know. I just feel like renewed, and I feel like I'm just an open book now. I'm just a sponge, ready to absorb and grow as a fighter. And folks, don't go anywhere because coming up next, it's Team Philippines versus the world. South Korea's Kwon Won Il is ready. And he takes on the former world's bantamweight champion, the Philippines' Kevin Bellignon. When we return. Flyweight contender Danny Kingad up against former one flyweight world champion and number four ranked contender Kyron Akmatov in a long overdue match that was originally the flyweight world Grand Prix semifinal in 2020. With Kyron Akmatov forced out of the tournament due to injury, Kingad took on the crafty Reese McLaren. Like a check in the box. There's a left hook. There's a ball right hand. This is Danny Kingad's moment as Danny Kingad goes in for the takedown. Oh, Danny Kingad takes down the PJJ Black Belt. How do you do? Around the back of the hamstring, the sciatic nerve. Hooks the leg here, Kingad. And McLaren goes for the ride. Knees now to the body of McLaren, to the arm of McLaren. Elbows again to the orbital. Go the fists. There are the knees from the kick.
great timing, but he's also got a variety of kicks as well, not just that spinning back kick. You can see the movement is constant from Kevin Bellingon. There's that spinning back kick again. But Quan Juan is applying a lot of pressure right now, looking for that knockout. Oh, yeah, 100%. And it's going to live forever on it. Kevin Bellingon's highlight reel. Now, this is what I talked to Kevin a lot about. It was these takedowns. He says that Quan Juan Il's Achilles heel is going to be that takedown defense. He's going to be able to get it down and really look for some submissions and also ground and pound. But Quan Juan Il's doing a good job so far of defending that takedown. Bellingon, number two ranked in the Bantamweight division, former champion. Before Bibiano Fernandez, what was it, four times? Yeah, they got four times. The quadrilogy. One more to look at a leap from the entire division with a win here over Bellingham. Yeah, what a statement it would be to shake up the rankings like that. Roundhouse kick there, Bellingham gets into the canvas on his back, blocking Kevin Effect from here, drives a knee into the head, there's an elbow, flurry of punches from Kevin. Nice catch to sweep out that support leg coming from Kevin Bellingham. But it was a good job by Quan Juan Il to pop right back up and continue on that pressure. These looping and scooping punches of Quan Juan Il are always so dangerous, Dragon. Yeah, his punching is so slick and it's so straight, but he's also got beautiful uppercuts and hooks as well. So he utilizes the entire array of boxing weapons. And he's also mixed in the kicks as well. Body shots from Kevin, just gets out of range of that harpoon of a right hand. There's the uppercut again from Quan Juan Il. Following Kevin around the circle, shadowing him, Kevin backs him off with a right. That's what Kevin needs to do. He needs to answer back. He does not want to allow Quan Juan Il to keep this pressure on. It's constant pressure coming from Quan Juan Il right now. No single leg sprawls out nicely, though, does Quan Juan Il. Thrust the jab again. Kevin on the outside, there's that sweeping right hand once more from Quan. High knee, Kevin with the counter overhand right, doubles up on it, puts forearms guard against the round kick and carries the front kick. Kevin needs to earn the respect of Quan Juan Il. Quan Juan Il is just walking him down at this point, coming forward continually in his face, looking for those hands. Nice little knee there on the entry. Kevin was staggered by that momentarily. Quan Juan Il's got his confidence oozing through every pore at the moment. Kevin Backs him up with a right, another overhand right there from the Filipino. Yeah, that's what he needs to do. Also, maybe take out those legs, too. Start throwing that calf kick, even to the thighs as well, just to slow down this pressure coming from Quan Juan Il. That's right hand. Backs him off again. Smack bang to the orbital of Quan Juan Il. Kevin bites down on the gum shield. He's got grit and determination, the former world's champion. Big leg kick up ends him. Beautifully done from Kevin. Juan Hill actually tried to jump over the leg kick on that time. Kevin could have wound up for it. High low goes Juan Juan Hill, changing levels with his kicking arsenal. Juan Juan Hill is actually a Taekwondo black belt, so expect those kicks to come. They also look pretty fancy while he's doing it. He was actually a champion in his elementary school days in Taekwondo. Taekwondo, the national martial arts of Korea. Developed by General Choi. Also an Olympic sport, of course. This is a similar pace Quan Wan Il is competing at, similar to the what uh, he did with, against Chen Rei, how he was just constantly on it, never giving him a break to breathe, never giving him a chance to reset and sort of rethink his strategy. I like this pressure coming from Quan Wan Il, but Kevin, in the latter part of that round, he was able to start landing shots and earn the respect and also just kind of score a little bit on the judges' scorecards. Anastas Kamabai to everyone in the Philippines, looking to go 3-0 tonight, seeing Philippines led by the man here in red, Kevin Bellignon. Here's Kevin trying to stay true to his word with the takedown attempts. He tried two of them, but Quan Juan Il was able to pop right back up. See, he didn't control the hips there, so it's not really counted as a takedown, but he does get credit for the aggression on the takedown attempt, but it doesn't score really as a takedown. But then Quan Juan Il just keeps coming with those hands, keeping his feet underneath him, and a lot of pressure coming on the Korean Quan Juan this is our Christmas gift to you, folks. The last show of 2021, and what a cracker it's been so far. 
and Kevin Ballignon make it 3-0. The team Philippines will one more nil spoil the party, as he told us he would earlier this week. Punk kick there from the Korean. Good jab to a high kick. Duck under from Kevin. Flurries back in a high kick of his own. That's what Kevin's got to do. He's got to answer the pressure of Juan Juan Il with flurries. He's got to put combinations together. He's having a hard time kicking off his back foot. He's not really scoring with it. But when he goes first and when he pushes forward, he's able to connect. Both men, interestingly, have a physique ideally suited to their striking art. Juan Juan Il carries that long, lean, lengthy taekwondo physique. And Bellion's with the shorter wushu style body. It works well for them. I like how Quan Wan Il switches stances to southpaw and then throws that rear leg left kick. It's nice. Oh, shit. Oh, liver shot! Shot! Liver shot! Bolt him in half like origami! And Quan Wan Il has knocked out Kevin Bellion! Wow! What a statement by Quan Wan Il! Strikes and knuckles between the knuckles! Justin Brown has called a stop to this contest after 52 seconds in the second round for your winner by way of knockout Kwon Won First loss for Team Lagai tonight and the biggest win of that man's career here at the Bolt himself in the top five in the heat and bounds and weight division right now coming out of you you just stopped the number two contender with a knockout finish that you predicted how do you feel oh i feel so good first i want to talk to i just want to thank you and i want to thank our team and our team for winning this fight and i just want to call them on the door i will beat the leg number two i am a new generation icon give me the title shot and then, how was my performance shot three? Good. I want to get the, I want to buy the car and give me the bonus, baby. And then, give me the title shot. I'm a new era. Well, okay, so you want a title shot. You want the winner of Bibiano versus John Lineker, is that correct? Yeah, Bibiano, John Lineker, I don't care. Who still called me? Hey, John Lineker and then Bibiano. Anyone in Choke, kill me! Hey, Tarisha, it's mine! 
Well, you look spectacular out there, and you went to the body. You were going for the headshot where you're known as a headhunter. You like to go after that big knockout with that right hand. What's, what did you see by going to the body to that knockout finish? I don't know. Just, uh, just time me. Time me. Just time me. It does, if it hits a punch, I just a looking that, and then our body shot. That's it. <laughs> Well, you have developed your English and that sixth sense of finding that right there. It was a thing of beauty to get a liver shot knockout off the former world champion. Thank you, my friend. We look forward to seeing you again. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Quan Juan Il. If you weren't a fan of his before, you're going to be a fan now. Quan Juan Il calls out Bibiano Ochoa Whoever should be the champion after they meet next year. My word, that will be extraordinary. We park our peepers backstage. We're coming up next our main event. The former flyweight world champion, Karen Akmatov, looks to bring his dynamic wrestling against the king from Team Lick High, Danny King. That's when we return. Big left hand drops the clarion. Karen Akhmatov is on his way. Excited daw na magkipag-compete sa kanya. Alam ko na ako din yung isang mamimit niya this time. Si Kairat, magaling siya sa wrestling. Ayun, pre-prepared namin talaga yung ground game eh and 
wrestling defense natin. Ako ang magdo-dominate sa kanya. No, хотела либо но у него много сомнительных побед, я так хочу прямо это сказать. Предпоследний бой, по-моему, когда он дрался в рай с Маклареном, тогда мне не кажется, что Дэнни Кингдон выиграл этот бой. Айо пунг ибига юнг скокан са манга джаджес. Кун кая кушан и нак-аут са ферст раунд, гавинко. Я хочу ему ответить, он когда сделал вообще нак-аут на последний его очень бой, я не видел его от него нак-аута. Пинанганак каме на... My less, my explosive. Yes. Nagkakamali si Kairat na wala akong power. Я не боюсь его очень нестойки, но, как говорится, не удивляйтесь, если я его наколфирую. Si Kairat, yung sinasabi niya sa akin na katalunin niya ako sa striking, nagkakamali siya. Mahalaga ang panalong ito sa akin kasi malapit na na maging isa akong world champion. We are excited at may papakita namin sa buong mundo na this will be fireworks. Representing Kazakhstan! Kairat the Kazakh! Enormous, enormous in power. The former flyweight world champion Karat Akhmatov makes his way to the circle. And Mitch, this is a guy who can take you down, who can ragdoll you all night long and put an absolute beating on you. And having spoken to him early this week, Karat is full of confidence. He says he is unimpressed. And that's quote, unimpressed with the technique of Danny King. Yeah, and you know, that says a lot. That's how confident Kairat is coming into this matchup. Now, you have to remember that these guys were supposed to meet in the semifinals of the Flyweight World Grand Prix. So they've been preparing for each other for a very long time. Kairat Ahmedov is a former Greco-Roman wrestling champion. He is so strong inside the clinch. He's also the former one Flyweight World Champion. At one point in time, he was on a 24 win streak. 24 matches. He won in a row, undefeated. 17 of those were in the very first round. And right now, he's trying to get back to that, and he's riding a three-fight win streak, Michael. You know, talking about flyweight girl from three, Karen was so disappointed he didn't get a showdown with Demetrius Johnson because he told us, I would have beat Demetrius. He's so confident that he would have handled Demetrius Johnson. You have to be confident at this level. You have to believe in yourself, and there can be no doubt inside your mind. And speaking to Kyra, he has that belief inside of him. He's really developed his striking skill set. He's got fast hands, he's got good kicks, but his strength is definitely going to rely inside the grappling area. He is so strong. When he gets inside that clinch, you're going for a ride. He's got good top game, heavy punches, excellent ground and pound. But what he's also got is a gigantic gas tank. Getting king at also has a gigantic gas tank, so expect these guys not to put the pedal to the metal and go hard. Folks, there's a guy up in the North Pole who's keeping very busy at the moment, so make sure you get your gifts from our wide range of apparel, accessories, and more at one dot shop for this holiday season. Representing the Philippines, Danny the King. King Ad! You know, there's a good argument to be made that Danny King Ad is the most exciting fighter in one. His belts with Cher and Ikeda, Wakamatsu, Wada, McLaren, they were absolutely crazy. And we're expecting another one here. Since he's lost to the greatest of all time, Demetrius Johnson, who he wants to rematch, he's gone seven and one. He's hunting for a rematch with Adrian and Marias, who subbed him right at the start of his career. And he says that Carrot at the top dragon is fragile. I don't know how you call a Greco Roman wrestling champion fragile, but that's the confidence they can get. This guy is dynamic, ladies and gentlemen. This he has good striking, he's got good wrestling, and he's got great submission attacks. He can really do it all. Look at it. He threw a man. He threw him with his leg. He caught the leg. 
right, and the guy threw him with it, man. That's how dynamic this guy is. He's so good everywhere. Danny Kingan is a great striker that really blends things well together. He's got submission wins. What I really like about him, though, is the pace at which he puts. I think this match is going to be action from start to finish, Michael. I'm really excited about this one. But the biggest thing that I'm impressed with is Danny Kingan is his mindset. He has been competing with one championship for a very long time. And he's grown so much inside the circle. I'm really looking forward to this one. Leave a man if this leave a man has ever lost a non-title fight. It's going to happen for one of them here tonight. And that is an amazing statistic. Potential perhaps for fight of the year right here. And what a way to end 2021 with this main event. It's Team Philippines versus the world. King Ed versus Atletov and the flyweight division. The elder statesman, by some eight years, is the former world champion, Kara Akbatov. Striker versus wrestler over 15 minutes, which will be judged in its entirety, and knees to the head of a grounded opponent are legal. Here's the laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Arts contest. Our three judges scoring this bout at circle side are Thomas Genberg of Sweden, David Wee of Singapore, and Mohammed Suleiman of Singapore. Introducing first, out of the blue corner, he is a former one flyweight world champion and the number four flyweight contender, standing at 165 centimeters tall, weighing in at 61.1 kilos. Holding a mixed martial arts record of 27 wins and two losses. Training out of Ireland MMA Pro Team and Tiger Muay Thai. Representing Kazakhstan. Stepping into action is Kailan the Kazakh. his opponent out of the red corner he is the number two flyweight contender standing at 165 centimeters tall and weighing in at 61.2 kilos holding a mixed martial arts record of 14 wins and two losses training out of team lakai representing the philippines get ready for Sunday. begins your referee in charge the boss olivier cost i guess watch out for the headbutt low blow back of the head and spine you both know the rules fight fair fight clean touch very sure and back your corner from instructions for the boss olivier cost we are set for three rounds of action will it go the full 15 minutes team lakai the philippines versus the world it's two to the philippines one to the rest of the world so far Right, good. Final fight good. of good. 2021. Ready? What a thrilling year it's been. And this is how we end it. The former world champion, the crushing Kazakh, Akbatov in the white. The all-too-familiar red trunks of Team Lakai on Danny Kingad. Wushu of Kingad, look out for the sidekicks, especially to the legs. Look out for the turning back kicks, the quick hands on the inside. Greco Roman wrestling of Akhmatov. Already seek out takedown and gets it. Nice little catch to a takedown there from Kairat Akhmedov as he lands in half guard. Let's see what King Ag can do off of his back right now. Kairat's very strong in this position. He's got very heavy hips. Exceptional ground and pound. He chooses his shots very carefully. 
What are the options here for Danny King? At? Well, first thing Danny King has got to do, he's got to try to get off his back. He's got to turn onto his side and start looking for an underhook. See how he's trying to take his right hand and kind of shove it in? He's looking to get an underhook on his right side so he can pop himself onto his side and create some movement. But Kairat's so heavy, decades of wrestling. Kairat Ahmedov, they're going to try to keep him flat on his back so he can't go anywhere. The thing about the half guard, it's all about movement. You got to try to get onto your side and create that movement. Karadak Dzov, who says he has to dominate the fight because the judges always favor Danny Kingad. He can't take any chances. Good job by Kingad to get back into full guard. Come on, Danny. Kingad has a pretty, pretty good track record as far as decisions go. He knows how to rack up points and secure decision wins. So Akhmedov fought the Kingad definitely. lost against Reese McLaren, but said King Ed was gifted a decision. He does not want this to go to the judges tonight. He wants to finish the business before the 15 minutes. I don't think it was gifted. I just think Danny King and the team of Kai in general, they know how to score. They know the scoring of one championship. They've been lost. Since the beginning. You know that was a me that said that. That was Karen. That said it was a gift. Just clarify. Top control coming from Kairat Ahmedov. This is what he wants. He wants to keep Kingad on his back, beat him up for the duration of this match. He does not want Kingad on his feet, flowing with that strike and hitting him with that wushu. Kingad actually spent time training with the Philippine national kickboxing team, so his striking is real sharp. And Kingad no and Ahmedov knows that. He wants to ground him, put him on his back, beat him up, make him work. Drain that energy, that explosiveness away from Danny Kingad. Do this. Nice little elevation here for Kingad. Dragon that characterizes a Greco Roman wrestling. Greco Roman wrestling is uh, attacks from the upper body. So, so no they don't attack the legs. legs right? yeah. They don't attack the legs. So it's a tremendous upper body strength. Exactly. That's why he's so good inside the clinch. When you see Kairat inside that clinch, he manhandles people. But this time, he was able to get the match to the ground by catching the kick and then putting Kingad. Oh no. Down and King Ad hasn't been able to go anywhere. This is the game plan being worked to perfection so far for Karen Akhmetov, the former flyweight champion of the world. I spoke to Reese McLaren about Kairat Akhmedov, and McLaren was like, Akhmedov is so strong. He never really felt that pressure from somebody at this weight. He's just so powerful and controlling. It's really hard to deal with him. And that's why King Ed's not really able to do much. He created a little bit of space there by kicking off, but Kairat immediately scooted in and kept that pressure on. Akhmetov believes the winner of this one should be the number one contender for Adriana Moraes' world title. He has fought Moraes twice. He was the one who ended Moraes' first reign, but then, of course, lost the second match and lost the world title to Adriano. Has gone four and one since then on a three-fight win streak with love a trilogy match against the champion. Good ground control. Kian's doing a lot of the right stuff. You know, he's got his feet on the hips. He's trying to push away. He's just got to be a little bit faster with that push and getting his back on the wall so he can get pop back up. Is Olivia trying to do there with the foot of, uh, of Danny? I think King Ed's foot got caught on the cup, and I think it was just trying to unhook it a little bit there from the, the shorts there of Kairat. Feet on hips here from Danny. King Ed tries it. Is he trying to pass the side control there, Karen Akhmetov? Yeah, he's pretty close to doing it, but King Ad's got a good guard. I'm surprised King Ad has been able to maintain this guard the entire time they've been on the ground. Karat's got great guard passing, and there is a little bit of space. He's trying to get his back on the wall so he can get back up, but still Kairat with that pressure, and he's going to be able to end the round here, it looks like. Danny needs to get back into his stand-up position, and the round ends. Five minutes down, ten remaining. Folks, wherever you're watching around the world, it's our final show of 2021. It's our Christmas gift to you, and we are unwrapping our main event. Team Philippines versus the world, two to one in favor of Team Philippines. Can 
Very good for those first five minutes. Let's see if he tries to get back to that with the takedown and immediately gets to try to get on top. The sixth minute scheduled for 15. Trying to press Akbatov to the outside here. Can he work the striking and avoid the ground? Danny King A loss to the champion Adrian Moraes very early on in his career. King Ak would love that rematch. As I said earlier, Akmatov would love a trilogy match against the champ. Moraes got out of the win earlier this year where he knocked out Demetrius Johnson. On our one on TNT series. This is that clinch position. Let's see what Kyra can do with it. Whereas Danny's got two underhooks, and he's trying to pry him up. He was able to turn him around. That's good for King Ad. And Danny got the left arm free to work those strikes. No chance to throw the knees. He drops down looking for a single leg. Roundhouse kick there from Karen Akmatov. Nice combination thrown by Kairat on the exit there from the break off the clinch. Kairat did say he was not afraid to stand and trade with Danny King. Now we've seen Kairat stand and trade with J.H. Eustachio, with Adrian Marias. We saw him do it with Daquan Kim. Kairat's got very good striking, but he prefers to lean on his wrestling. I think he's probably going to do that here. Nice little catch there by King at his rushes forward with a big uppercut. What we see Danny looking for a takedown here in the second round is, is that where you thought he'd go here, Mitch? Well, I, I believe that Danny King at thinks that Kairat is not as good on his back as he is on top. And I think that's what he's trying to initiate here, because now King Ad gets taken down with a beautiful duck on there. It was a huge wind up off that right hand. Kairat side coming ducked underneath it beautifully. Butterfly hooks here from Danny King and glances over to his corner for a moment. Mark Sengal calling the instructions. Will at the top look to pass here. Both men not breathing heavily. Plenty left in the game. They're not known for gassing out either of them. Should be fine to go the full 15 minute here. Single butterfly hook for Danny King, eh? There's a lot of instructions coming from Karat's corner. What do you think they're saying to him over there, Drake? Well, you, if he's following their instructions, he's they're saying push down on that left leg, work into half guard, and then slowly try to get back in. But King Ad's good scrambling, right? King Ad is, we've seen that time and time again from King Ad. He's a good, he's got great movement. And as Kairat was able to try to push down on that leg, King Ad was still able to get that butterfly guard. Some heavier breathing coming into play, and you wonder if it's Danny King. You said earlier on when we saw Murad Ramazanov against Kazakhstan, this style of wrestling is grinding and it drains you and it saps you of every ounce of energy. Yeah, it's like trying to push against a brick wall, pushing as hard as you can against that wall and it doesn't move. It's going to be draining, and not only physically but also mentally, it demoralizes you, and it's just hard to deal with. And when somebody, they just keep coming, and that's what Kairat's bringing to this, is his game plan is being executed perfectly. Is this the right defense from Danny, the, the butterfly guard? Well, it's kind of all that Kairat's given him, right? Like, he should, he could try to put his feet on the hips like he did in the first, and then push off. But it's so hard when you're dealing with a grappler, the capability of... Kyrod. I'd like to see him dig for an underhook right there. See, now he's got the underhook. Now we can create that space. That was a good job by King Ad. He's got the underhook, but still, Kyrod is so heavy on top. You can see the way Kyrod just kind of floats on top. That's decades of experience. It's really hard to train for. Don't forget, folks, once again, Carol Akmatov said he does not want this to go to the judges. He believes the judges always favor Danny King Ad. He wants to finish the Filipino. 
Well, if he continues with a performance like this, like in the next five minutes and 45 seconds, it's going to be pretty much academic because King Ed's not able to mount any offense off of his back here. But is this enough of a performance to send a message to Adrian and Mariah Strangler? That, that's a tough call, especially, you know, when you've got, you know, so many contenders inside, you know, the flyweight division. And um, it's, it is a good move up. You know, if, he's if he takes out the number two guy, you know, that that's a pretty big statement right there, right? Good popping right hand to the side of the jaw there from Akhmatov. Ten seconds. Watch out, back of the head. Another one Watch there out. from Karat. Final seconds of this second round. We're going to move into the third. And once again, it is judged as an overall contest, not as three individual five-minute rounds. Inside the Singapore Indoor Stadium, Last show of 2021. Let's to the team now. Protect your midsection and the jumping. Wait for your timing. Throw some fakes and give him the knee. Because he keeps going and going. If you do a straight, go for the midsection, don't swing. Pick your shots, then kick here. Okay, we are ready for the third round of action. To all of our Philippines fans, hope you enjoyed that peek into the corner with the genius Mark Sangal and Danny King. Cool, but it seems to be traffic driving in the direction of Karen Akmatov. How can Danny turn it around now, Dragons? We've well, got to keep it on the feet. I like to see him start going after the leg kicks. Uh, maybe start going a little bit lower hard for Kyrat to pick that up as far as the takedown is concerned. But you can see he's going for it. Yeah, it's a bit of the wushu technique coming in now. Trying to mix it up, Danny King over the jumping roundhouse. Good punch to take down there from Akmatov. Yeah, that was a beautiful left hand to a single. Was able to get him down again, and this is right back to where we ended. Minute 10, and we're seeing it right back here. As Chiron is able to settle back down into position, get into the guard of King Ad and start working on him. You asked me about possibly, you know, what's going to happen next for Chiron. If, Ky if maybe if it's not Adrian or Mariah's, I wouldn't mind seeing him go up against DJ. Oh, that'd be thrilling. That would be thrilling. And, you know, we can see that Danny is having difficulty, but he knew this was coming, Dragon. Yeah, 100%. They, 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 there's no other way you could prepare for Karen. You know this is what Karen's going to do. It's not like Karen Akhmatov is ever full of surprises. It's just that what he does, he does so well. Yeah, and especially against primarily a striker, right? Shutting down their striking game, keeping them on their back, and just applying that suffocating pressure, right? See, look, Danny's got an underhook, right? He's got an underhook on the right side. He's on his side, right? And there's still nothing he can do, right? If you're getting coached by, you know, from your coach, from your corner, they're telling you to do this. You might be able to turn it into a single. He sprawls out here to Zach Batov. A little bit of the tape coming loose on the left glove of the former world champion. A tango on the feet from me landed there by Danny Gignad. Chance of the elbows. There it is. Hey, that's more like it. And Olivia sees that tank that comes loose, rips it off, we're back underway. Can Danny keep it striking in the wushu realm and work his magic? He's got to stay on his feet, Danny King at. He cannot go to ground against Karen Akhmatov. Oh, he's, oh, he tagged him. Abigail follow punch, another one. You see Danny King at desperation now. He wants to land that big salvo, that one big shot that may drop Karen Akhmatov. And it's not beyond the realm of possibility for Danny Kia to do that. Yeah, I like how he starts going to the uppercuts, too, to deter that shot. I want to see the knees. I want to see the uppercuts coming from a king. You can see him threatened there with the uppercut. Look at it. This is the danger time now for Karen Akhmatov with two minutes 20 remaining because Danny Kinnett's confidence is building the longer it stays on its feet. Some knees on the inside here from the king. King Ed's got to separate here. He's not going to do it right here. He just don't want to tangle in the clinch with Kairat, even though he's got the underhooks on both sides. Don't forget the Greco-Roman wrestling known for its upper body strength, which is what 
me just talk you about. You've got to get out of this situation. Break off. Work the distance for the Wooshu strikes. Looks like Kairat might be fatigued a little bit. He's not even pummeling in. He's just kind of sitting there with it. King Ant needs to separate. Get back to those uppercuts. Get back to the striking. One minute 45. Time against Danny King Ant. Kairat has built up so much of a lead with just his aggression on the ground and his top control. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Walking knee to the inside. Five there. Akmatov says, OK, boss, no worries. It didn't hit me in the groin. And the knee there from King Ant. Right idea. Love to see him get the right arm free and crack an elbow across the jaw of Akmatov. But there's no separation here, Dragon. Yeah, I don't know if it's because King Ant's not letting go or Kairat's not letting him give him that space, but... This is a good. This is good for Kairat Akhmedov to just kind of sort of ride out the round here. King has got to separate. I don't know why he's, he's trying to take him down. Trying to kiss the game plan here of Danny Kingad with 56 seconds remaining in that last fight of 2021. Team Philippines leading the world two to one. But Karen Akbatov having a very good 10 minutes of this fight. And now he's back on top and he's inside control. Oh, that was the beautiful back, timing back. from Kairat Akhmedov to catch the knee like that and to turn around and put him on his back. Will Danny Wu a missed opportunity on the feet to not have broken off and worked the striking that was looking better in this round? Possibly. He's, he might regret it, but he also gave him a little bit of time. To maybe he was tired, but I don't know what he was thinking at that point in time, but... Kairat Akhmedov showing the veteran that he is and uh, really putting together a good display here, trying to work that ground and pound from the top position. Wow, how about the crunching of Kairat Akhmedov? Put a bow on that. And there's the sportsmanship and the goodwill. Rightfully so for the holiday season ahead. It looks like it'll be a draw tonight between Team Philippines, Team Lakai, and the world. It goes down to the judges, which is not where at the top wanted it to go. But he controlled everything on the ground, and most of the fight was on the ground. Yeah, his top control was there. He did good inside the clinch. You know, King Ant had some moments, but I just don't think it was enough. It was just that grappling coming from Kairat Akhmedov was just too much to deal with. He was able to get on top, soften him up with a ground and pound, and just control really the entire 15 minutes. King Ant did have his moments, but not enough. Nothing to be ashamed of. Took on a former world champion. Let's go down to Tom Lau now and find out our winner. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of battle, we turn now to the judges' scorecards. All three judges have called this contest in favor of your winner by unanimous decision from the Карат, отличная борьба. И я слышал, что ты не хотел смотреть на счет. Ты волновался? Всем ассаламу алейкум, всех приветствую. 
я очень много готовился к этому бою э, на протяжении. Я знал, что Дэнни Кинг очень сильный соперник. Э, он дрался такими чемпионами Адриана Морайса, Митри Джонсом. Он заслуженно являлся вторым номером. Э, мы очень много, долго откладывали этот бой. Никак не получалось то ли у меня, то ли у него. Но сегодня выпал шанс подраться с ним и одержать так, таким серьезным соперником. Greetings to everyone. Uh, I've been preparing for this fight for a very long time, and uh, Danny is a very strong opponent, opponent, and he fought with many champions. So I've been looking forward to this fight, and uh, he's been number two for a while. And uh, this fight has been delayed a few times so due to different reasons, and I'm glad that today I finally had a chance to to meet him here on the ring and to uh, to get this victory. Well, you beat the number two, Danny Kingad, just like you said you would have if this match took place at the semifinals of the Flyweight World Grand Prix. Where do you think this puts you in the title picture? Итак, ты одержал победу над Дэнни Кингадом, как ты говорил, что должно было произойти еще в Гран-при, в полуфинале Гран-при. И что теперь тебя ждет в борьбе за, 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 чемпи... за звание чемпиона? Да, мы должны были встретиться с ним в Гран-при, но, увы, у меня не получилось, я сломал руку а, после первого круга. Но я очень го готовился к этому, но по состоянию здоровья мы решили с командой перенести этот Гран-при. А так я хотел выиграть этот Гран-при и именно в финале встретиться с Дмитрием Джонсоном. Он легендарный боец, а, независим от весовых категорий. Настал тот день, когда я должен с ним уже подраться. Uh, если организация One Championship, One Championship Mr. Chatri даст мне возможность подраться с Митерсом Джонсоном, я бы с удовольствием подрался бы и показал бы казахский дух. А uh, я думаю, еще же, uh, если этот бой не состоится, я претендент номер один. В следующем бою я должен уже драться за титул. Uh, I've been preparing for this for a long while and um, unfortunately we had to postpone the Grand Prix fight because I broke my arm. Uh, but in the finals I'll be happy to meet Demetrius Johnson and uh, the day has come for me to meet him here on the ring and I hope I'll be giving this possibility uh, to, to meet him, uh, to meet DJ here in a fight and to show my Kazakh spirit. And uh, I think for now I'll be the contender number one for the title. Well, I look forward to that match against DJ. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Kairat Akhmedov. Thank you, Soda. Thank you, uh, Lakai, Benny Kingan, you best fighter, you best coach, Team Lakai, thank you. Kairat Akhmedov, he is a star inside the circle and out of it. A great win for the Kazakh tonight. Folks, don't forget, we kick off the new year on January 14 with one championship heavy hitters. Zhong Jinnan defends her strawweight world title against Ayaka Miura. And also, Roman Crickler defends his world title. Dragon, what a night to finish 2021. Team Philip and Team Lakai versus the world. True and to all. And this was a night full of highlight real action. Yeah, but those two wins from Team Lakai... John Losangiao getting